everyone copied everyone's homework. homework. Well, but we're not alone in the studio. Maybe we have some differing opinions from our casters. And of course, we have the dynamic duo of Mitch and it's not Waldo. <laughs> it's the other guy. Yeah, what? Matt found him. <laughs> I mean, someone needs to tell them they're what? horizontal stripes are just not that flattering in this current year no, of our they, lord. They look great. They look great. I, I didn't have. I didn't get the memo they were dressing up like Jake today. I didn't get well, the memo. we're not. Like, we're not. <laughs> we like, we are, we are not collectively <laughs> no. suited. Because no. now, Jake, what do you Matt, you're acting like if I had told you about this, it would have meant anything to you. Like, you're <laughs> acting like, would don't, you put don't a, lie. Would you put he a tie would have worn a tie with this shirt. I, that is cap. That is not real. I actually did look for a tie in the back to just put on. Yeah, yeah. That'd be pretty funny. Hold on. Let me just... Yeah, if you give me the tie, I'll, I'll throw the tie I'll on throw after it this. <laughs> I actually, nice. I had Hangzhou winning this game. Really? Yeah, I think that they I think that Leave and, and Shy are disgusting. They I are. You don't sound I, very I, convincing. <laughs> well, I mean, who, yeah. who is who is one hundred percent sure about this? I'm surprised so many. I think it'll like be close. Three one. Uh, you know, obviously we, there's some extenuating circumstances here, but this Hangzhou team team is still at full strength and playing in a, you know, a context they're comfortable with. So. In pajamas. Potentially, the Johnny. Pajamas, we don't oh, ask. Exactly. We don't ask about the bottom half. You know what I mean? As long as they turn up to work <laughs> in the jersey, the jersey, it's all good. Yeah, you know? yeah, we don't know. I, I mean, the, the one thing which you obviously have to take into account here is that it's loser picking the map, right? So that would, even if the Hangzhou Spark would go up, that would put Mayhem in a favorable position, being able to avoid. Anything the Hangzhou Spark will look good at. Yeah, once again, ah. gold star for Jake because bringing up the ability to force these rush maps is really pivotal in this particular series. We've seen in the West especially, teams just not even bother a lot of the time trying to play dive comps on you know, Shambhali Monastery, for example. That's opened up for some you know, craziness. Uh, there are teams in the East that play a bit of Bastion though. We've, we've seen that from MN3, so it's not as if the East is not aware of that, but uh, I am very ah. curious to see, yeah, if we get to see some forced rush maps, because the Mayhem have been a little shaky in the uh, rush yeah. setups against True. very good rush teams in the West. Mm. Uh, I could see the Spark winning this one. I, I think it'll be like, it could go like 3-2, a little bit of a coin flip. Like, the Spark, it's just like, I mean, they're going to play dive no matter what's going on. If Even if they're getting just pummeled, they're just going to play dive. But Leave and Shy are both pretty sick. I mean, they could just start to dominate <laughs> the game. Uh, I think if one of us doesn't pick an East team, like, Avril is legitimately just going to quit. I can just go disappear. Someone has. Yeah, I think think though, he picked them, right? He's, I, I kind I'm, of regret the 3-1. I definitely did. I mean, he definitely did. I, I honestly kind of regret the 3-1. I'm kind of leaning towards more of a 3-2. I think right. taking yeah. it to maps for the Spark that are like very dive heavy. If Florida doesn't have the map pick on Escort and they don't get to play uh, a Shambhali or a Havana where, you know, they can force rush. I think this series could easily go to five it, it, and be decided it's by like control a, rounds. It's like a 3-2 or like a 3-1 where like Hangzhou throws a little bit and like it could have <laughs> gone to 3-2. That's kind of the vibe. Also, someone in front of a crowd is always a, a real pleasure. The guy loves yeah. to, to play it up a little bit mm. there and I think he's going to feel pretty he's comfortable. He's going to bust out the dance moves. You know, yeah, I mean, that's why I want to see Florida. <laughs> that's like the main reason why I like seeing Florida win is because he just goes crazy. Like, I mean, he's he's like uh, you know, living on in that swoosh legacy from the Flo <laughs> Florida. Yeah, right. Right. He didn't bring the inflatable palm tree on stage this time. A little dance party. <laughs> uh, but but uh, the thing that's nice about Florida this time is though they dance after they win, not just because they walk out. Uh, as we have a pretty sick uh, matchup here in terms of DPS, right? Especially on Tracer. Leave and checkmate. This should be really exciting. Yeah, the one stat that we don't have here, which is kind of what I'm curious to know about, is like solo kills per 10. Because that's yeah. actually where we can really start to separate some traces in their performance. But Leave is putting on like a pretty standard MVP level performance already this year. There's a very good reason to be excited about this Hangzhou team. There is always a question of, okay, like, what more is this team? We look back at their last, like their last week of games. It's obviously all Winston Dive. They really prefer that. Map pool's quite telling here, but both teams pretty squeaky clean, uh, you know, on quite a, a few of these maps here. You see, obviously the ones that I'm looking at are, you know, maps like Blizzard World. Uh, this uh, must have been the map set for like the Vegas Eternal against the Florida game <laughs> or something. You can't be doing that one more. <laughs> oh my what God. I do? We have, we have, the, we have, we have Rectax family in the chat. You cannot be, you cannot be throwing these ones. Uh, well. I mean, yeah, sorry. You know, if your, <laughs> if your mum got in the chat, I might consider holding uh, back sometimes on my pejorative, but Oasis is going to be the first map in this series. And again, it's a map where we've actually seen teams try and break free of the sort of the dive yeah. comp, uh, sort of, especially on City Center, right? We've, seen, we've even seen like Junker Queen comps, and, but teams that are good at playing dive comps can usually wait them out, play around them a fair bit more. It's some of the other maps, I feel like University, where you might be forced into, you know, trying to play something a little bit more brawl heavy. I also think we may know how this series goes pretty quickly because if the Florida Mayhem decide to come out and play Rush and they're really effective at it, we know their dive is like pretty good as well. 
uh, which you feel like at that point they'd be able to kind of handle any map that Hangzhou wants to go to, anything they want to throw their way. So, you know, maybe we get some rush here early on, kind of like sets things up for what we see for the rest of the series. And again, it might be a big answer to our question, because the one thing that we're leaving out is the fact that these Eastern teams are looking across at the West, looking at the compositions that they're prone to play, and maybe starting to adapt some of them themselves, right? We don't yep. have a ton of data of Hangzhou, for example, playing rush compositions, but you know, it's fair to assume that they've tried to add that to their repertoire uh, in case they're forced into their head-to-head. -head. Florida, though, Matt, very classic. They're going for, well, not classic. They're going for the Lucio Moira setup, which has set them apart from other teams in the West recently with the oh. Reaper up front to pressure down that tank line. Yeah, and you're going to have the Spark actually end up playing a little bit of a Ramatra setup here too. So Ramatra with a Sombra here in the mix for the Spark early on. This is really interesting. We talked, you know, the, the Nest talked about it. We talked about it, how the Spark love to play this dive, and they're going to come out right really early on and not actually play it. Really curious to see how Sombra finds value here. We know how effective May is at isolating that enemy Ramatra and setting up the team with the May just to rush them down, get a player advantage, and then exacerbate that into a team fight win. Hangzhou are probing here, but they're definitely going to be wary of the main. Ice Wall already comes down here. You can see someone and Co. want to barrel forward, but it's a nice body grenade thrown down by Monk to ward them away. Checkmate, though, comes out with the first kill. Yeah, I mean, uh, RuPaul's essential there, right? If you don't have that feeling from the Moira, if you're playing, you know, maybe really kind of like almost any other healer, maybe you're not able to keep someone alive, but just the overall HPS output there from the Moira keeps someone standing tall on the point and allows Florida Mayhem to take it first. Yeah, and that was despite the Biotic Grenade, right? So obviously Moira really yeah. good with the front-loaded heal stop burst, but with the Biotic Orb and, of course, that sort of left-click healing, there's a lot at the start of the fight. Is as the fight goes longer where you start to be a bit more concerned about her throughput. Yeah, I mean, Shy is going to have an EMP here. It's just you need to force them to drop down before you use it, right? I mean, EMPing the players up in the high ground doesn't really do much of anything. So it's going to be a counter-engage with the EMP here. It's only a trade that someone's able to find Shy in the front line. No Sombra here for the Spark, and now the Coalescence comes out. This is the scary part. Every other fight, you expect RuPaul to be able to use this ultimate here, and it's a game-breaker. Uh, and I mean, now for the Spark, right? It's going to be above 50% for the Florida Mayhem. They're still going to be able to control that high ground. You have no way to access this. I mean, you have Rally, you have the Nano. You're going to Nano probably, what, Leave or Gushui? Maybe Gushui with that Annihilation. But the Florida Mayhem, I mean, they have their sound barrier. I mean, the sound barrier is going to be huge to just live through all of that. Yeah, Death Blossom is scary. Oh, what Checkmate is on the flank. It doesn't have a, a Blizzard here, so is it just a wolf from behind? This is a very risky play. Here we go, going to jump straight in with the Death Blossom, though. Looks to have been effective here as Lexa falls to someone. Gushui gets the Nanaboost now, trying to push back a little bit more with this Annihilation. He's finding one, but that may be it. The rest of his team is brought down around him. And the Florida Mayhem definitely look to be a step ahead in the rush. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the sound barrier, you know, towards the end there from Chorong, it's able to keep everybody up, uh, get them over the line. And what, you may have Shy able to get a touch, but this has been all Florida Mayhem early on. Uh, this is a dead. really bad look from the Spark. Shy has to panic, translocate, and he does it straight onto the point to try and keep overtime going. Lee wants to step up, he has a death loss, but the wall's a problem, and Mera brings him down midway through the ultimate. This is disastrous for Hangzhou to begin with. The Coalescence comes up right on time. Tap your watch, everybody. Every other fight, RuPaul gets that ultimate off, and there's nothing left of the Spark in this first round. It's 100 to 0. So. We do feel at the Spark probably better at dive. We were like, hey, we don't think they'd be good in the rush. Uh, we see that there in round number one. Uh, we'll see what they try and do here. Maybe like a different variation of it, right? Uh, and has still some options to go with. Let's take a look here from Merit's POV. It's uh, just kind of... You know, not, not even the ultimate needed here, just kind of barreling on forward. This is post EMP for Shy Matt, so he tries yeah. to counter engage, but there's a yeah. May wall like, up as he EMPs. He like didn't even take any damage from <laughs> watching there, right? Yeah. Like not, not there's nobody even like shoot at him, do anything. Hunter need to find a way to be proactive without using May if that's the way they're gonna go. So they need Sombra to get in early with a way with, for the rest of them to follow up on that ultimate. Yeah, so now uh the Spark will actually just make a change here to bring uh, in the Lucia, right? Get speed, try and, you know, collapse, because like you mentioned, if you're not going to play the May, or the May you can play a little bit slower, right? You can use the wall to separate people. If you're not going to play the May, you're really just trying to run them down. And without the speed in the last round, it obviously didn't work. The Mayhem here hit with a two-player Biotic Grenade, but Gushray bears the brunt of that pushback here. 
Florida make him set themselves up on the point. They feel confident and they want to play around these chokes. Checkmate deals with Shy. And the Sombra's out of the fight already. Not only are you lacking a play, but the chance to build up towards that first EMP now, further delayed. Yeah, I mean, that's the brutal part, right? And I mean, now you're going to lose lead here where your Sombra doesn't live. You can't farm the EMP. Then you're going to get staggered out here over time. Probably worst case scenario here for the Spark early on in round two. Merit, Bionic Grenade, doesn't matter, they're gonna push straight into Hung Cho. And this now begs the question about map selection, right? You know Hung Cho really wanna try and set things up to favor them, but... I, for, for first, worry about getting out of the spawn before we talk about map selection. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they don't even get to play on this map, let yeah. alone any of the others yet. No, so they, they do have EMP here, right? Uh, EMP with Nano, they have some key ult, like really big ultimates to be able to use here. So maybe this is something that, it, the, the worry here is if you don't flip with this set of ultimates, it's looking pretty dire. Probably right? okay. Yeah. Your EMP needs to be pretty immaculate here. Okay, comes down, but no, the Coalescent still gets operated from the outside of the fight. Someone's still going to be brought down, though. That's wild. He went for the Annihilation, mind you. Lee pushes forward onto the point now. Blizzard deployed and then into Ice Block for Checkmate. He wants to run Lee down. A belated Biotic Grenade comes in, but it barely causes Checkmate a break in stride. Wall thrown up here just to section off the spark, but they still want to push off the back of the sound barrier now. Merit forced to fend for himself as Lee is hungry, but it's forced to abandon the Reaper. And here comes someone back off the spawn, and Checkmate finds a huge headshot. Yeah, as they're able to get Gushui right after they lost someone, and even with everything used there, the Spark just kind of get bullied off the point. This, uh, you know, May obviously has great survivability, almost like a second tank at times, being able to ice wall, ice block, uh, and just stall for time, stall for time until someone is back in the action. This is dangerous now. There'll be a coalescence in this fight, a death blossom here for Merit. Shy has a window to build that EMP, but it's going to have to come awful soon. Merit backs up here. Shy has to get out, but he got that EMP online. But Lee's already gone down. Merit comes in, breaks through the front door and finds two. Shy, I mean, he might have had a chance to part with that EMP, but it was far from impressive, far from enough, in fact. And that is a convincing opener here from the Florida Mayhem. Yeah, now, now, now I feel bad for you know, kind of, kind of talking the desk, and you know, maybe we see a three, three, two, three, one. I mean, it's still on uh, the cards. Yeah, it's still on the cards. So, man, that is a dominant performance from Florida there in map number one. I, I, they, they barely let the spark get anything going. I mean, they weren't really to do anything offensively. The spark, even when they had like tons of ultimates, four or five at a time, you know, just trying to dump everything in, not even able to flip the point. Uh, really strong game from Florida. The West has been refining this Ramatra comp for quite some time. They've really worked the kinks out of it. They found a lot of variations, especially on these control maps, where you see that Moira inclusion. It makes a big difference, that survivability, of course, that Moira now has is uh, a difference maker, especially through Coalescence here. The fundamentals, Matt, for Florida in the brawl, uh, in the rush composition, look really nailed down. And, and I think Hangzhou learned really early on that like the Brig wasn't going to be like really impactful, right? They go to the Lucio in round two, or having the sound barrier and the ability to just speed close the gap was going to be you know, essential. Uh, but it really didn't make that much of an impact, right? I know Merritt was able to get in a really good spot on the Reaper. Uh, and I, and I wonder, like, is just the May something that we're not going to see from the Spark today as uh, Blizzard World uh, be map number two? That is a Spark pick. Is this allow them to play some dive, right? It's a wake-up call in a big way here for the Hangzhou Spark. They knew the West would bring the big guns. They knew they'd be hungry coming into the mid-season madness. But this is just something else. Stick around, everybody. Much more to come from our mid-season madness opener after this.
Hongzhou. A lot of people consider this a Chinese super team coming into the season. They were at the top of everyone's power rankings for APAC. Shai Li, Gushreb, that trio is absolutely monstrous. This looks like it's going to be a record-breaking year for Hangzhou Spark. Spark is their biggest chance to go to the point, and it's Shai above with two, and Zest can't even go around the corner. Shai, 3K. Barker back on the point. The defending, making sure that it can't be capped out. Boy tries to contest, is instantly taken down. Plus. Last final pulse. Playing around Dynasty, puts them right so to that choke point, finds Krillin over to oh, the side, so isolates good. Profit. Are you kidding me? Now that Spark has proven that they have equal mechanics, if not maybe better, and maybe a better clutch factor at the end of the day, you, you got to put Spark in that conversation of are they a top two team? top two team in the east but the calculus gets a little more complex now as we bring our two regions on a collision course to one another here at the kintex that's right mid-season madness is kicked off with a bang in the florida mayhem are the cool guys not looking back at the explosion a good start for them here on oasis they look very very good in the rush mirror as we expected but things are about to get a little more interesting. Uh, here's, uh, I mean, really, I think this map will define how this series goes. Like, we thought it could be like 3-1, 3-2. I, I, I think, like, we're on the cusp of maybe even a 3-0 in Florida's favor if the Spark are not able to execute their dive to the way we think they can here on Blizzard World coming up. It's going to be their biggest test. You're, you're absolutely right, Matt. They're going to be selecting a map that allows them to play to their style a bit more, of course, after having lost the first. They choose the second. The Florida Mayhem have elected to defend on Blizzard World. And, and I, I, I really, uh, I, I love actually the selection by Florida of like, let's get a full hold here. Uh, you know, really kind of crush the morale and spirit uh, of the Hangzhou Spark. Because, uh, you know, you, you, you beat them up pretty bad there in map number one. You come in, you play defense. Uh, without kind of like slow, I mean, they're going to play faster, right? You would assume. Uh, if they're going to play like Winston-based setups here. Uh, but it, it took a while for them to get anything going where you, you're like, hey, if we hold maybe three or four times, we could actually just full hold here on point A. All eyes going to be on Shy here in a big yeah. way. On the Sombra, going to be have to going to be able to have to make a, a big difference here. Some pretty unconvincing EMPs. I do think our Sombra Weeper DPS line doesn't really allow for the greatest degree of skill expression from a roster like the Hangzhou Spark. Their dive has to be immaculate yeah, up but against a team like the Mayhem, who've dealt with the best Winston comps in the uh, West. And the Mayhem supports are so good as a duo, right? With RuPaul and Charong. It's not going to be an easy team to be able to dive against and take advantage of. Have a look at this setup now. It won't be a Winston defense look, oh, which is interesting, yeah. not the craziest, but we've seen Florida be, play a very good proactive dive-based defense in the past. See a little life weaver hijinks here, maybe just a little platform. Shy will be on the Hanzo here, already looking to pressure that high ground and leave. Yep, it's on the Tracer. And we'll see what Shy ends up going to here. Uh, will be the Sombra, so... <laughs> This scares me because I think Florida, they saw, right, how well they were able to kind of like deal with them in the rush that maybe they say, hey, let's just kind of play around someone. Let him be just kind of this big, you know, massive target on the point that's going to be tough to get out of the way and, and pocket him and maybe merit from the high ground here on the ash is able to do work. Leave looking to work in tandem here with Shy. Spotted by checkmate already. Back from behind there. That one on RuPaul. The dive in from Gushway but Lee. Already struggling a little bit there. And Merritt pretty much untouched playing from this high ground. So Hangzhou just probing for the time being. That dive was not convincing. A second attempt from Gushway shut down. He slept on the point. Yeah, I mean, he has slept, but you know, both dive uh, players, I was going to say, Leave and Shy were both extremely weak during that. And it looks like they were trying to maybe follow up on what Gushui was trying to get going, but this time Gushui, though, is going to jump up to the high ground with the help of Shy get two. Much better looks here from Hangzhou now. Merit falling, so they're putting pressure on the critical targets. Monk quickly tending to Gushui with that body grenade here, and the, uh, the Spark have some time, I suppose, to regroup here. 
to make their push, but this is a slow comp to break through from Florida. The Mayhem are buying a fair bit of time. Someone doing very, very well in staving off this damage in Nemesis form. And Checkmate is in a position to wrap around, but Gushwe, the Primal Blade, you know, he's building towards it here, finding someone in Chora already. Yes, uh, you know, if Florida could have kept a few of those players alive, maybe you end up fighting that as you would have had Annihilation, you would have had Rally, maybe you could have kept that going, but that you lose your Ramatra, you lose your Brig, you have to back out. Interesting. That's, uh, the Mayhem just may not elect to try and mirror this composition at all. I, I thought they would have felt comfortable to do that. To just match this, right, and just play that. Like, I, I feel like someone's Winston is you know, really strong. I feel like they have a composition that, that can definitely rival the Spark in playing this type of style. But instead, we get a very characteristic West versus East compositional comparison here. Primal Rage up for Gushway now. I've seen Hunter Spark with a brace of ultimates to, to deploy. To Mishai's EMP wanting to catch both Chorong and Rupal if possible. No nano yet for Rupal, so protecting Chorong in that EMP dive gets a bit harder. Gushway has a look. Taking down a half here. He'll try and convalesce on the low ground for a moment. Here's that EMP though, Rupal. Uh, yep, gets yeah. one over. I, I mean, it just it, it looked like that Chorong was just a little bit too far away and maybe with that rally, didn't get to him straight away. I mean, now you burnt the rally here. This actually might be pretty good for this There's no healing. There's yeah. not enough healing. Someone able to fight. Leave oh, what? Excuse me. That is unexpected indeed. But wait, wait. Had the rally. Where did he? Well, that rally. Pushes in. Someone's still alive. Somehow. It's only repair packs from Chorong. I think keeping him up for the time being. And eventually he's forced to succumb. Makes it quickly about faces. Tops Monk back up, and it's back to business for the Spark. Yeah, that got a little bit scarier than I thought it would, because like I said, the rally going, I thought he was going to be able to keep Monk alive, but it looked like actually he was sending Nagushwe and maybe some of the flankers. Is uh, This comp has just not worked out for the Florida Mayhem thus far, and someone now goes over to the Winston. Feels like a little bit of a concession here, or maybe oh, Florida just yeah. wanted to use Annihilation, right? Merit now, the target of the dive is going to be a nano boost here from Rupal, so... Didn't have that available in the previous fight, but this time he's able to make sure Merit can stand tall under this level of scrutiny. Uh, this should be a Mayhem cleanup. Yeah, not, not the most value out of Banana, right? Just kind of the heal, the damage reduction. You're going to keep Merit alive, but this should be fairly simple cleanup here, as this is not a room you want to be in against the Winston. Yeah, someone happy to serve himself up on a platter there. Got hit with another biotic grenade from Monk. So the Mayhem have a chance to set up here. The card is pretty close to this checkpoint in fairness, and Shy has an EMP for the next fight. Let's see, he's gonna watch someone come out of the spawn. Gonna have a little bit of an idea where uh, the rest of the Florida Mayhem is playing from. What did the Florida Mayhem have to kind of counter this, right? And stop this. They have a rally coming through, but you expect that Shy is gonna play for this EMP to hit at least both supports, right? When both supports play in the high ground, this is a fairly uh, I want to say easy EMP to connect on. Just as someone jumps back, would have been an option, but no one's going to be forced. Oh. Chorong spotted him out. Still leave us out to be the other end of the pincer, though. Is it worth it, though? I mean, you just get Chorong. Uh, the problem is the Ash, I think. You know, yeah. you, you really can't just, like, steamroll through. Coach Gun here. Oh, great bubble deployment from Kushwa. I think actually pr 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 protects himself from the Coach Gun knockback, but still can't get purchase on this Ash. I, I feel like oh, you could have held on to that MP. You could have got so much more value. That's going to be the rally from Langsa. Now, nah, Lee doesn't want better though. Pulse Bomb dropped down. Chorong eliminated checkmate. Not able to find a stick at all. And yeah, Merit's oh. just going to crumble here. Too much pressure now for the Florida Mayhem as checkmate is hacked and forced back to spawn. Not enough health here on oh. someone. Eventually, he will give up the ghost as well. I think uh, someone's primal rage actually just flung leave right into Merit's line of sight and ended up uh, leave putting in a better position to be able to take him out. So, Hangzhou takes that second checkpoint. This is really good if you're a Spark fan, right? To see, you know, in this kind of you know, dive mirror now, but this far, you know, Spark have really looked great. I will say, Florida are better uh, in the dive composition than we've sort of seen so far. They're a little bit off kilter through that second phase of the map, and a big shy EMP was a big part of what enabled Spark to prevail there. He wants to duel. Can't blame the guy. Checkmate in his sights there. Six final blows and one death for Gushway so far. And if you can keep your supports alive here for the Spark, you're kind of good. I mean, if you were just looking at Gushway, Leave, and Shy as like a three, as a trio, it's like there's maybe not one in the league that's as talented in terms of mechanical skill as these three. Another successful pulse bomb from Leave, and someone I was going to say returns to his team empty-handed, but he actually doesn't return at all. 
it's going to be the mayhem now. Falls to back right on up here. Whip shot. Come out from Chorong to try and keep Rupal alive. But the Hapjo are indomitable. And they're very hungry here. Someone will be forced back into spawn, and with just under 90 seconds left to finish the map, this is good stuff from Hangzhou. And, and this is why, you know, map pick is so important in tournaments like this, right? As uh, Spark getting very close, will be Merit here on the point. He's going to get a hack on a Gushui. Let's try and slow him down. Gushui's got that primal. So much pressure here on the Rupal, especially. He's able to deploy the Nana Boost, though. Someone can't do anything about the backline of the Spark. He's hacked. A good pulse from Checkmate, though. Getting rid of Gushui is a big deal. Tip of the spear now broken clean off for the spark. And Merit uh, sits back on this EMP. I mean, they could nano Langsa here. I mean, it would be super risky. Maybe as well just gonna wait till Gushui's back, but. Keep fighting. Is possible. Rupa positioning oh. so aggressive, considering where Lee was. Monk trying to punish there, but they're able to get him out of trouble. It's four plays here with the EMP, and here comes the mayhem. Finding a little bit of energy now. Great setup by Merit. And, and just a perfect time to be able to go, right? They probably had an idea that Gushui is coming back. Clear them out as he's coming back in. They don't want to end up kind of burning through any of their ultimates. It was Spark. Not going to like panic Nano or you didn't have that rally. So now you get it down to a one fight game here. For the Florida Mayhem to hold. Jai makes his presence known. No Close to an EMP. Yep, that's true. Someone wants to push in, force the rally from Lexa here, but Merit's already been felled. Chorong forced to back off the card here, maybe give a little bit of ground. Checkmate, and enemy territory is brought down by Shy, who got given the nano boost. <laughs> Definitely has an EMP to spare now, and this is well set up for the Spark to finish the map here. Someone for his lava, apparently, but the EMP is going to force him to stay grounded for now, and Lee is going to be there to finish the job. Good target focus here. It's going to be a nano boost going over to Chorong to try and keep the brick in the fight. A good stall mechanic as well in lieu of someone who's still waiting to come back into the fight. What a stick to checkmate, though. Getting rid of Monk in what could be a long fight is definitely the ticket, but Gushui is causing so many problems here for the mayhem, and he gets the card across the line. You're almost able to get a hold there, Florida. Right, it looked for a second when the, the rally comes through and they have the nano on the brig. It was, uh, you know, when Churong is there, he's so difficult to get out of the way. And someone switches over to the Ramatra there to just try and stall at the end. But Hangzhou, get it over the line. I think that's so important for them. Is that EMP that was kind of forced here from Shai as Churong was able to reveal the Sombra? Still, the timing was fine for Shai. The follow up was great from Lee. He is always there in moments like this. Yeah, I mean, the EMP there connects with just Chorong, and I believe Checkmate, who's like on the backside of the sign dropping down, just ends up getting hit with it in the line of sight. But like you mentioned, I mean, Shai puts in a few shots, you have Lee, we get that beautiful POV coming from the opposite direction. Uh, that's an easy kill. We said all eyes would be on Shai here to be a difference maker. He's 5 and 0, Merit is 0 and 5. Not it's not have, great. No, nope, I would have that same level of somber impact for Florida Mayhem. So again, a map completion for Florida, absolutely a prerequisite to continue on Blizzard World. So we'll see what the Florida Mayhem do decide to play. Do they not play? I, I feel like not playing the dive is just a concession, a, a real big concession. Yeah. And I think if you're the Spark, you look at that and say, okay, they're, they're a little bit scared to get a matches in that game. We can take advantage of that. Three, two, we'll beg the age old question of it. Which comp is better, at least? Here on Blizzard World? Well, we've talked throughout, obviously, the Western oh. broadcast. <laughs> Get back in spawn, son. <laughs> uh, now we see teams like the Houston Outlaws, like the Atlanta Reign, uh, even the Florida Mayhem, right, against the Western teams, do play a lot of dive. And it seemed like dive over time was going to be the comp that at least looked like it could be pretty prevalent. Uh, you know, on most maps or something you can play pretty consistently and that you're going to have to play it at a high level to be able to win. How is how is someone supposed to interact uh, uh, here? I, I don't know. His whole is, team is across is the map from him. On a long flank here. Someone, please explain this to me. All right, well, the rest of the team joins him eventually. Someone, uh, I guess, lighting the brassiers of Gondor, come to my <laughs> aid. Eventually, they might him do a light here. We start to force the lead back a little bit here. He's going to dash out of the slow field. Gushray though, pressing him, timing, nice dive, hack on Rupal here, Shy. A problem. It's gonna be Gushray brought down first here as the Mayhem now will transition uh, to the point. Uh, I, I do feel like Florida just faded them there a little bit. Like that's not the ideal place that you want to just be like charging your Winston into. 
has not. Maybe there's something here, though. It's a big biotic grenade. Leave and link to the kill feed. Is there going to be able to get a hold out of God, that? God, it's awkward trying to watch this rush comp actually finish a fight against the dive defense, right? Someone goes well around the outside, just flanks on Ramatra solo. Yeah. Uh, and eventually there's a fight as a result of it, but there's no point capture progress. They eventually get torn apart. Like, I don't feel like this is the strategy you really want to use to try and unseat the spark. They definitely don't seem to be remotely bothered by it. And now you can start to cycle ultimates here if you're the spark, right? You're going to have this EMP that you can maybe just get both supports as they're on the way in. Here they come. Chorong disintegrates. Rupal now. He's stuck at the choke. Yep. I mean, you saw through the X-ray. Look where, where uh, you know, someone's wrapping all the way around. I mean, they're so split. Merit completely caught here. Now the Florida Mayhem starting to look pretty shambolic. Just cut in half there. Good die. Obviously, the pressure from Shine at EMP catching Chorong instantly a big part of that. The Mayhem have had plenty of time to think about what's going on here and build some but, ultimates. But, but but now the spark. You can now know Gushui. Gushui can prime all. You can end up using your just, rally. Just, just stick a pulse bomb. Uh, and, and guess what? By the time you you know you use some of those ultimates, you cycle through, you're going to have another EMP. Probably even faster than that. Leave might have a 100% pulse bomb stick rate uh, on this oh, map so wait, far. He just, just double blinked in. Just was able to just, like murder Merit while he's on the ground and not get punished. I mean... This is pretty average stuff from the Florida Mayhem here. Had some uh, big talk coming into the mid-season Manus tournament. A lot of confidence here. Yeah, Someone east said, is yeast. East is yeah, east, yeah. I said. think Florida might have an east infection at the moment, Matt. They are struggling to find a way forward. Someone said he wanted to strike fear into the back line of the spark. He can't even reach the back line. He may as well be in a different bloody postcode. You haven't even been able to use any of these ultimates either if you're the Florida Mayhem. It's, it's going to be Gushui getting the benefits of the Nano going in, just kind of pushing the support so far back, right? The support's not even a position to make a play. Chorong, a little unsure about how best to make use of the whip shot there. Gushui always coming in for very unexpected angles. Primal Rage available for him and another EMP for Shy. I don't want to call it early, but this is looking scary. Uh, okay, so they, they, they got Monk and they got Lee. It's a huge opening. They're going to end up having Link to use the rally here. Are they going to use the EMP as well? Surely you're not going to commit that to this no. fight. There's just no way. Nicely done by Florida. They eventually are able to pick apart the Spark. They're going to start the cap here with 10 seconds left in the round. Yeah, I mean, the Spark, there's no shot they're going to go back and contest, right? You just give this one up. You've completed the map. There's no reason to just kind of throw bodies at this. So uh, in the final moments, the Florida Mayhem will take checkpoint A. They have to be perfect here through the second part of the map. But they're not even playing the Winston. How do they access the high ground? But how do they follow up on, like, an EMP? It's really just on checkmate. All right, so someone makes the swap now. Checkmate versus leave. It's an anime battle for the ages. Leave ops out of it, though, as there's bigger fish to fry. Someone switching over towards the Winston here, and the Mayhem are opting into a dive mirror. I mean, they're opting into it, and they don't really have any ultimates, right? You'd think that Shy could just come over the top here, EMP, clean this one up quick, and then you're, you know what, at a minute, minute 15, and you're in a fantastic spot. Rupal, yeah, he's my kind of honor player. You just throw out a sleep dart. You never know. Might hit something big. Torok gets nano there, so Rupal absolutely delivering on his promise as a support, and great body grenade protection there for Chorok. Gonna push forward again, another speculative sleep dart. Shy gets caught by someone, though, and Hangzhou are gonna be repelled and maybe bundled back onto their half of the map here. 90 seconds to play for Florida. Now, well and truly motoring through this second phase of the map here. A stagger on Hangzhou means that they're gonna have three people coming back off spawn while their teammates are off the map. Uh, they, they, I mean, they need to be so clean here, but the spark by just staggering you out or kind of giving them an opportunity as Gushui has to pop Primal. He's getting pressured so far. I mean, look at this. You're just using it to get the hell. Yeah. That's a reaction, I guess, just to uh, someone. Not good. Pressuring him down. So those ultimates they build up on that long defense, Matt, have been uh, thrown after the bad money, even. Rupal sleep, no connection lead, pulse bomb. Say the same for that one. He's a little bit short on that one. He's able to find Mirror at the very least over Checkmate, doing a one better on the other side of the map. But That's two for him, one of them a big pulse, and this card is getting home, Matt. Why Nano leave there? You had Gushway getting pressure down on the point. He had no primal, he was getting so low. And you nano the tracer to just go try and get a kill on the back line? Uh, that is, that is risky.
Uh, but that is uh, that is also the type of plays that the Florida Mayhem need to have happen if they're going to battle back into this. I mean, Florida's in a spot where they can actually finish with a little bit of time left. Merit here. Still only the one final blow to his name, but that's not really what's most important here. It's about the follow-up on this EMP. Lexa caught out by it here. No, 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 no hope for someone descends upon him in a frenzy. So the brick now is out of the equation. Gushway has seen better days. He's forced to jump back to his side of the map, and now Monk's going to be under pressure and no sleep connection. He's brought down by someone, and this is getting out of hand now for the Hangzhou Spark. Florida finding another gear. Yeah, this defense from Hangzhou, as soon as the Florida Mayhem got the first checkpoint, has just been silly. I mean, it, they, they've just been throwing some ultimates in. They just have not... You know, they just need to like settle down a little bit, right? They had such a great advantage early on. They still actually are in a pretty good spot. DMP checkmate, no chance for him to blink away. Translocate for Merit, though, as he pulls the plug on that operation, and so must someone heading back to the high ground. Gushway looking to pursue uh, here. And, and Florida ends up investing the nano boost there, right? And they don't get anything out of it. So this is really good for the spark. They just needed to settle down. They, they were just kind of like maybe throwing a little bit of ultimates in there to try and make a big play, stop them right in their tracks, because they almost got that point A hold, but I know now, I mean, that, that that was a big turn of events. Now they can settle down a little bit. You have a rally here, you have a primal rage, and you're gonna have an Anna. You're in a fantastic spot to prevent the Florida Mayhem from finishing the map. Checkmate got the drop in his opponent there, but Gushway flattens merit. Yes, an EMP on the horizon, but with 20 seconds left, there's a question of how effectively you're gonna be able to deploy it, let alone build it up properly here. One more fight for the Florida Mayhem. They need to finish the map, and they are a long shot away, as we've seen a stabilization of sorts from Hangzhou. Here's the rally from Lengsa. Chorong has one of his own. Someone slept for a time. It's going to be a rally popped instantly. A pulse bomb for checkmate. Could be a difference maker here as Gooseway goes for the Primal Rage. He's looking to jump right into the middle of the pack here. Separate everybody from the rally healing, but he gets caught. Hacked. He's down. Checkmate finds the pulse connection. And Lengsa, but what about the cards? The Florida Mayhem let that one slip out of their hands. Nungjo Spark put it together. A solid defense here on the Blizzard World. Both teams look like they are being ruled by the pace of the game as opposed to dictating it themselves. That is an unfortunate way to lose there if you're the Florida Mayhem, but because I, I feel like they really started to gain momentum towards the second part of their offense. Uh, where the spark, I mean, that that is fortunate that that went the way it did. I can uh, hear the echoes of the Chengdu zone. <laughs> the, the, rem the remnants. Yeah, there are enough Chengdu, ex-Chengdu players on this roster, Matt. Yeah, that is true. So we take a look at some of the highlights here. Is now Early on, it looked like the spark, they were just, you know, forcing their will, forcing the pace of the game onto the Florida Mayhem. Their dive was so clean and Florida trying to play those Ramatra comps. It was just not working whatsoever. And then it was actually quite interesting because once Florida started to match with the dive, that's when they started to put up a better fight. I still think Shy is having an immense individual impact on that Sombra, something I'm sure that the Florida Mayhem would love to have available to them as well here. It's a convincing finish. Well, a convincing start. Less convincing finish perhaps for the Hangzhou Spark here on this second map. We are even in the series. And it'll be Florida Mayhem to select the next battleground after the break for map three.
Now, the Overwatch League isn't the only place to catch exciting Overwatch competitive matches. That's right, teams from across the globe are competing to be the first Overwatch 2 World Cup champions. That's right, tune in June 22nd through July 2nd to cheer on your team in the online qualifiers. Top 16 teams will battle it out in an epic land in the fall. You can head over to overwatchworldcup.com for more info. And if you're interested, well, one of our national teams are actually competing in this very game. Hangzhou Spark basically uh, will be representing Team China in our World Cup this year, mate. Yeah, and I mean, World Cup's always a fun time. That's how we met, right? We met through World Cup? Yeah. yeah I met uh, Johnny through World Cup. That's right. We, uh, yeah, sure we, about we, it. we, uh, did we didn't cast together, actually, no. No. But we, yeah, we were chilling. Yeah, we were, we're, we're hanging chilling. out. Yeah. We vibing. I saw you side-eyeing me. I knew it was forever <laughs> at that point. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't remember that. Yeah. That's uh, it's a little Convenient. bit of revisionist Convenient. history. I just remember, like, uh, you know, you knocked on my door and be like, hey, can you please cast with me? And I was like, who the hell are you going? <laughs> okay, listen, my voice is much deeper than that. I was like, Thank security, get this guy out. Get this, you're get off, this, you're get off this, by like get, get two this octaves, fan, Get this fan out of here. <laughs> Who's this guy? And I was like, oh, wait, he's on the broadcast team with us. Uh, this series is going to be silly. I, I just got really going silly vibes. To be? From, yeah, I just got really silly vibes from this series. Uh, you know, we, we've seen just, I mean, that C9 was pretty bad. It was, uh, that was pretty bad. What, look, uh, it, it's up there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, someone has. <laughs> the look on someone's face, I think, really sold it to me at yeah. the end there. Florida had a tough time. I mean, I got so many questions. The first one being like, why do they think that they'd be able to push this Ramatra comp so far? Especially on defense, I guess, against the, the dive is really interesting. This is a team, Florida, they're fantastic at dive. At least that's our, yeah. that's our analysis of it, having watched them play in the West. <laughs> And coming into a series, sort of saying uh, we're not going to try and mirror that is, is quite interesting. But Hangzhou... It's like sometimes, I, I, like, you may just be, like, overthinking it a little bit, right? Where it's like Florida, just, like, play play your game, right? Like, on the, you know, if you're going to play the dive there, play the it's, dive to match them. Like, it's totally fine. Because what, they pick uh, Shambali coming up next, right? That's probably a rush type of map. Here's your Blizzard World stats for your Tracer players. Leave here uh, with some pretty insane pulse bomb kills, but actually doesn't keep up with Checkmate, which is surprising. For like every time we cut to leave, he's leaving a sticky on someone and then getting out of there. So pretty close matchup between these two. I think the more illuminating head-to-head -head would have been a Sombra one, Matt, if I'm honest with you. Oh, yeah. I mean, that one would have been uh, real interesting to take a look at between Merit and Shy. But, but if you were to just like isolate, you know, the tanks and the DPS, you would say like the Spark are up there in terms of like talent in the league, right? You're looking at what? You're looking at, I uh, you know, maybe you know, Hawk, Lip, Stalker. You're looking at Fearless, I think uh, seeing, Happy, Pelican. We're and, definitely and, seeing, like, lip-level impact from Shy. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest with you. He definitely, like, he is really getting out there, completing a lot of these final blows, and playing very confidently. I also think that Monk has done a very good job at pressuring someone. Yeah. A lot of very effective body grenades. Someone is finding himself with much less room to breathe on Blizzard World. Yeah, I, I just think that a, a team like the Spark is so scary because if the supports play a little bit above average, right, you kind of know everybody else is going to, everybody else has the capability to take over, dominate a game. Uh, that, you know, last year, right, when we had like six days, you have to be awesome over like six days, maybe five of the days, right? In a tournament where you only got to be awesome for three days, uh, a team like the Spark is super scary because you get in a groove, and the support starts to play well, and you get sick performances out of like shy. Uh, they're a team that can like run the table like pretty pretty well. Chamali Monastery, I don't think uh, more than any other map, it screams to me, sit down, you're playing rush, or you're losing. That yeah. definitely feels like the Florida Mayhem are trying to force this. Nothing could I mean, too fair, sometimes we get carried away with our narratives, but nothing could force, reinforce, I guess, this sort of rush versus dive, east versus west narrative more than you know, seeing this kind of map picked here, it will be Florida, of course, trying to bring the Ramatra-style comp on defense. Yeah, they'll start on defense first, so we'll see what the Spark decide to do. Uh, no, on map number one, right? They tried playing, like, Ramatra with the Reaper Sombra, and it didn't look great. Uh, so maybe we see a little bit of a different look. Uh, play the Doom here, maybe? A little Doom, Doom Fist uh, action. is uh, oh, Gushway on the Winston, so... So, this is interesting because you're playing a deep spawn camp without a Baptiste set up in your Ramatra comp. If there's a Winston in a team that can like play dive into this and probably make it work, it's probably this one. Oh, the pressure oh. on checkmate is just sublime. Bionic grenade and hack. So, 
No chance for Iceball. Checkmate should have hit that shift button instantly. Instead, he gets absolutely carted for six. <laughs> I mean, dude, Gushra is so much fun to watch play. I, I, when you kind of think about like Winston players who have just changed the game of Overwatch, uh, no, obviously Gushra, uh, like what? It was like maybe the first World Cup, like super hype, and you know, uh, came in and absolutely delivered. And, and now the Spark, they get the car moving, they get it going pretty fast. Like Florida doesn't even really burn a ton of clock there. And they don't have to reinvent the wheel here uh, in terms of breaking this rush composition down. They actually just isolate an individual player in, in checkmate, the most annoying to get rid of, and just blow him up. This is also probably an, an easier setup, I would say for the Spark to be able to keep their supports alive, right? They're not being pressured down. They're really trying to put that pressure on to to take him out, which he's fantastic at just kind of staying alive. Oh. And they're not going to be able to push in on the supports. That's going to be the EMP and you deal with someone already. I, I was wondering, okay, what value do you get from a defensive EMP here when you're on the back foot? But you just take your time. Hangzhou are actually this slowing is, the game this down. This is best case scenario for the Spark in that their, their support to, uh, I believe it was like Jake during that Hot One segment. I couldn't really understand what they were saying about laughing. halfway through. I was laughing my ass off. I was like waiting for Danny to just throw up. <laughs> but uh, I believe one of them said like the duo, the support duo for the Spark was like a weakness. And uh, I think if you look at this team, it definitely is. But they're not playing a composition here Florida early on that can take advantage of that. This time though, they deal with Monk. Okay, decent start here. Someone going for the Annihilation now. Hacked, but able to block this card getting very close to the checkpoint, so the Mayhem intervening at just the right time, and I would like to see them slow the pace down when they can, and then get to decide these fights on their but, own terms. But there's going to be another EMP coming in here from Shy. He's building them so fast. Yeah, in, uh, in just a little bit. You're going to have an EMP plus the Nano, right? You can Nano Gushue as, ah, oh, you end up losing leave. That's tough. You're going to have to wait now even longer. Nicely done for Merit. Finds an opportunity, pounces on it. Good follow-up there from Chorong. And a sound barrier to boot here, so the Mayhem starting to ease into this trove of ultimates. Uh, Shy is building his ultimate in 1 minute 10, checkmate 159. Yeah, and I mean, uh, it's just, I believe this is Shy's second EMP of the round where checkmate's yeah. just on Yeah, he's holding there. it, so that does skew the stats. Uh, he's obviously not building a new one while he's holding on here, but this is perfect. Lee instantly finding the right target. There's no window in between the EMP and the tracer follow up to exploit. No. Dead Blossom! Oh, what is what? this? Merritt comes alive, lit up like a Christmas tree in the middle of the Sparks formation and flattens them. <laughs> Go on, Matt, give uh, me the analysis. Uh, as that looked like it was actually going to be pretty decent for the Spark. And, and Merritt, like the Death Blossom, like the voice line, actually came in a little bit early and he didn't end up getting any kills off it straight away. And then all of a sudden, just erupted for three. Would love to see that from another angle. The support ults here for Hangzhou to stop these like Wombo Combo or powerful DPS ults aren't quite there, right? The no. rally is... Incredible. Sound barrier here for Charon. Yeah, uh, or not, as uh, he is hacked and doesn't have it available. Doesn't want to risk the Ajax there, so keeps leave at arm's length. Pulse Bomb, no connection here, but a lot of pressure on Charon. Who's going to keep this guy standing? The Mormon Helix not enough to keep the Lucio with the fight. Gushu was able to bring him down. It's that prolonged engagement that the Spark are looking for here that tests through Pulse's healing output to its limit. He goes for a Coalescence here, but it's too late. Yeah, and I believe Monk actually hits a Sleep Dart there on a Checkmate, which is a, a huge player to get out of the equation as well. And even with the Annihilation rolling, the Spark may be able to take this first checkpoint. We are in overtime, though. Sound Barrier comes in. Torong, someone, Rupal, the only to benefit from it here from the high ground. Checkmate looks to try and intervene, but the Spark are laying waste to the Mayhem here. Rupa will stall for scant seconds, and that will be that. The Spark have got a renewed time bank and a renewed vigor. Uh, and they hold on to their EMP, and they're going to have a Nano for this next fight. So maybe being able to hold on to some of these key ultimates is going to be big, because this is a tough part of the map to push through if you're the Spark, right? That little kind of like S-curve oh. going about up on the high ground. What, were you just surprised that I was us casting that, or what, what were you surprised about? No, I mean, look, Matt, I, I asked you, I asked you to promo. pinch me I know you're frequently, because I, I think I'm dreaming. But no, Gushway switching here to the Ramatra. So kind of like you point out, very, very hard for the Winston Cobb to get value here. So now we're going to go into the mirror here for the rush. Not a great one uh, for Hangzhou in that first map. He but Lee doesn't seem to care about that. Pulse Bomb onto someone. Rupal trying to tend to check, but as he apparently was slept here, Leaves able to finish the job. Who is really tending to this Leaves Tracer? He does what he pleases. Nobody. I mean, we know how dominant Leaves Tracer has been in the past. As 
Now, map number one, they had him on the Reaper, right? They weren't able to actually like, get him into positions to make plays. The main uh, wall was a problem. Uh, yeah, and Tracer just completely avoids it, right? Uh, able to just move around the map traverse so fast. So we'll see what Monk decides to do. You do have this nano for Gooshway, probably, but look at this checkmate. Do you go for like just He the... wants a solo kill. Yeah. I think so. Okay, just a hack. The follow-up is going to be there. So here come the Mayhem pushing in. There was enough time for Monk to get that Nano over to Gooshway, who's very close to Annihilation now. Chorok sends Lancer off the map, apparently, but it's Gooshway! Coming in for three. The Annihilation that the Mayhem could not ab avoid. They were right in the middle of the setup for the Spark there, and all fell subject to the Ramatra yeah, yeah, you have both supports still alive for the Florida Mayhem. So it looks like they're just going to try and pocket each other. Maybe they're, yeah, they're going to be able to get back out on the cart. Stop them from pushing it in. So Pivotal fight here. EMP, Pulse Mom, and Rally here available from the Spark. In a fantastic spot. They just have to make sure they get Chorong out of the way. Chorong looking to stay clear of the radius of that EMP, but he's playing pretty close with the rest of his team. Okay, so goes for an early EMP. Here's a Rally Shy, a little bit caught out of the fight right now. He's going to come in with a late EMP, but will it be enough? Someone already taking the Spark to task. They're back Walk down, it's Langster and Monk back to spawn here. And Goose Troy can't do anything but hide behind his barrier. 15 seconds left of the round. You better believe the Mayhem are going to push him well and truly off the point. Yeah, Kariko here in the mix here for Monk. Probably just trying to make it back towards the card. Is Shy will get a touch? Just trying to force OT. Spark, no ultimates to work with here. That EMP from Shy, a little bit too late to make an impact in the previous fight. So it's going to have to happen now for Hangzhou. Over the top, you see Lexa there. Gushway a little bit low. RuPaul hoping to build up another Cold Lessons here. Being pressured right now by Shy, but he can truck it off. Somebody crashes into Lexa, removes him, and the Florida Mayhem rush style prevails on defense. Yeah, it uh, looks like just maybe one more player here going to try and trigger OT again and then be pushed back. So, Spark able to get that first checkpoint. Uh, and then able to get it pretty far here, almost to our second checkpoint. So not a terrible offense from the Spark on a Florida Mayhem map pick. They got more mileage out of the Winston setup on attack initially yeah. than we may be expected. Eventually being forced to bend the knee to what the map dictated in the second phase of Shambhali Monastery. Eventually they were brought to a stop. Shy, with that EMP in that previous fight, was not really ready for the timing of the Mayhem pushing in the way that they did. It came too late after someone already got a lot of value here. This is Maris Death Blossom. The EMP gets rid of the bubble. That's what allows him to oh, really clean up. Yeah. Because you heard uh, the Death Blossom going off, but then obviously you're not the kill straight away. But oh, once that bubble goes... It's so good to be back at land. <laughs> the so. face shots... Oh yeah, I'm about it. So we'll see the spark here on D... Uh, they're going to play... Uh, the Sombra with the May. So uh, typically we would see teams play like the Reaper. Put it away, uh, RuPaul. <laughs> yeah. Put it away, fam. What do you think about the Sombra with the May? Well, not as much kill pressure as like having a Reaper in the mix, right? I think it makes sense to play back here and not go for the spawn camp. You really want to shut down opposing main tanks. Uh, you, you know, obviously putting someone in a position where he can't access the back line or maybe catching someone out with that May wall is really important. Seeing leave on that though is definitely uh, you know, a curious decision. Chorong hit there briefly coming out of spawn, not clear by what. Okay, checkmate to the May here as well and very quickly Florida making the switch here. Yeah, and I feel like just Florida's composition is a bit better, right? You have the Moira, which is a little bit easier to play. Uh, you have that upfront damage with the Reaper. Mera gets caught in the front line there a little bit. Checkmate eventually cleaned up. It's not a perfect, picturesque spawn hole gear for the Spark, but it's going to be good enough. Yeah. There's a nice Biotic Grenade there from Monk. Monk connects with a Biotic Grenade that hits a few players there, so pretty nice early hold here from the Spark. So the Mayhem now. Again, no, they're going to be pushing into a choke here, and Hangzhou have been able to build up. If they're tracking ults, they should know that this is going to be a bit of a tough fight. Leave building up a blizzard already very, very quick. That's 49 seconds to get that. Maywall, blizzard. Fight's basically yours from there on out. Coalescence might have something to say about it, but it's going to be a tough sell for me. Here we go. Blizzard deployed here. Gooshway looking a little bit low. It looks like all of the Mayhem able to get out of the radius of that blizzard. The Maywall from Leave, not enough to hold them inside that. But now comes the Annihilation. Good timing from RuPaul to find a Coalescence here. Maywall thrown up, presumably, to block line of sight for the Moiri healing. But Hangzhou aren't finding value from these ultimates, and here come the Mayhem now. Pushing up, but into an EMP. They get caught mid-step there by Shy, and Shy finishes the job with Chorong. Nah, 
nasty stuff for Hangzhou. Using all their ultimates, yes, but the EMP was a big one. But still, being able to get that hold where the cart is, it, it hasn't really even like made it around that first corner, like right on the edge. Being able to get a hold here and hold it for even longer would be huge for the spark, right? Because you think that like towards the end, right? The next corner is really difficult to get around. You still have a fight there and then a fight before the point. So they're in a good spot in terms of like burning clock holding from this spot. Annihilation from someone who really wants to force the issue, but it's probably pretty scared about Biotic Grenade, I'd say. I would avoid that for the time being. And now we dive back into the front line. Someone. And Annihilation catches everyone it needs to. No Lucio here for the Hung Cho Spark, so no chance of escape when someone is in their midst. Yeah, so you lose, leave now, obviously. Everything kind of falls apart after that. Looks like they're going to get around that first corner, which is pretty difficult. They're just kind of pre-firing out of the window. You're actually going to get Shy out of Cloak. This is the best map for the Mayhem. I mean, this is a must-win. You oh, yes. don't have a better setup for your, your rush compositions at all in this whole series. They it's going to be shy. here. Now, Choro, the one to find that. Merit skirting around Gooshray for the time being. It's going to be a blizzard here from Leaves. And Merit exit stage left. He's just able to get away. Lakesa pops a rally, but Merit's dueling with him right now. And Chora runs over the top of Gooshway. It's a trade of Romatras with the Mayhem. Have an ace up their sleeve. Oh, it's Rupa with the Coalescence. Key kill on Lakesa to push him forward. And they have so much time to work with to oh, so get to that checkpoint. Get him, get him. Shy is Chase so him down. Low. You got the fade. He the, the discipline. He I mean, this guy belongs it. at a monastery after that. He, he, he thought about it. He thought about it. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if I really... Now, okay, we're going to see Tracer. I actually like this better than the May Sombra setup. Like, I feel Even like you're on this play, part of the map? I feel like if you're going to play the May, just play the Reaper with it, right? Just ditch the Sombra. EMP leaves there. Follow up. That's why you want to switch to the Tracer. Eventually, they get Chorong. Okay, now Spark a little bit belated on the follow-up here. Now, I guess they're a long way away from the Mayhem, so they try and push in, but with four players, Florida happy to stand their ground here. Yeah, because you're also, for the Spark, you're now playing a Lucio, so you're not even able to get, like, the May in the mix, like, safely, right? This is awkward. Checkmate, Ice blocking here quite happily. Gooshma has to annihilation here. Pops that one, mirrored, forced away here. Sound barrier now for the Florida Mayhem. They are here for the fight. Torong is bloodthirsty. Gooshway taken down inside that Annihilation here. Merit slept for a time, but now the Death Blossom comes in. What? Lengs are able to stave off a lot of that damage with the Nano Boost given over to him. So yes, he stays alive, but Monk has to give up his life. A hack on someone doesn't really slow him down at all here. Forced back, but the Coalescence is going to keep nice and topped up. Lengs are still alive. Heal packs being given hand over fist to lead to try and keep the Tracer in the fight, but the Mayhem will force them away. Checkmate was hacked, but now being topped up again by the Moira. More than happy to play back around the cart. That's a blizzard in hand, annihilation for the mayhem. And you're gonna have shy with the EMP. EMP has to be huge. I don't know why they didn't nano Gooshway with annihilation. RuPaul didn't get hit by it, but Checkmate could recover after getting hit by the biotic grenade here. I think mayhem are gonna just uh, reset this. In that previous fight, they had Gooshway running with the annihilation. They opt not to nano him to save just, it to nano Links <laughs> towards the end, which. I feel like you would have wanted your Ramatra alive there. The cart would have been installed a little bit further back out. Yeah. They make the swap. Maybe that's why they knew they were going to swap after, but man, that is just risky. Maybe too stuck on this idea of nanoing the brick to keep her alive. Maybe you're too afraid of an EMP. And so you forget the opportunity to, to send that over your Ramatra and potentially win the fight there. Someone, though, he is hooning forward. Gonna be forcing the spark back here. Gooshway in an awkward spot to be Winston right now. Someone annihilation has been popped. Here he comes. Lexa to trying to get away. Shield bash four, but he's eventually gonna be forced to bend the knee here. And that'll be another for someone. Pulse bomb left by Lee, but he's not gonna find any joy from it at all. It's Gooshway now with the primal rage to keep this going. He pops it now on the card. One minute and three seconds left in the round. The rest of the Hangzhou Spark are looking to try and filter in here and reinforce. Checkmate though, trying to clip the wings of the Winston and Gooshway eventually is hosed down by the Coalescence. Rupal finds his second here and it's just shy. Forced to translocate out, it's Lee now stepping up. Has to recall though, and the Biotic Grenade from Monk does nothing. The Florida Mayhem snatched Shambali Monastery away. Averting potential disaster, as was far from smooth sailing. Yeah, really competitive map. I actually thought, I, I, I think the Spark, it's just a little bit of like, odd comp decisions, I think, at times. And then obviously always defaulting back to this dive. But even with the dive, they look pretty good, right? They play that Winston like early on and, and, it, and it looks solked. But Florida able to kind of force the issue with their rush there towards the end. 
I think just that May Reaper combination with that Ramatra and the Lucio Moira, uh, it, it's just a more optimal way to play that kind of composition than what we're seeing from Hong Zhou. So Lee made that switch to Tracer. Obviously, yeah. the, the May maybe doesn't allow him to have as much of an impact over those fights as he'd otherwise like to. And Shy, I mean, sometimes when you're not the team taking the initiative, it's really hard to find a good counter EMP. By the time you get to the fight, you might have lost a teammate, you're in a poor position, you can't line up an EMP onto the ideal targets of your opponents because they're already mid-fight and sort of dispersed somewhat here. Pretty solid showing from Hung but this map had had to be a Florida win. Hung Shou gets to choose a map that favors them before we get to control, which I think is a big difference maker here. We'll see if there's any inclination, because you know what a push is like, right? Maybe a little bit harder on all yeah. those maps to make the wins to work. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be New Queen Street, right? I, I don't know about Esperanza being an option there, but that's the question that we have for Hangzhou. Is there a silver bullet here to get them to that map five? Because the Florida Mayhem now are going to continue to go from strength to strength with this rush side. Yeah, I, I feel like, uh, well, could you go Esperanza for this next map? Uh, we do see some Winston play there. I, I, Is it good I, I mean, though? On that map, I, I, I think it's pretty good. I mean, you have that like high ground bridge control there. Maybe right we get like, the... a, like a, an Ash setup though, from like the. I do like the sort of merit on Ash setup for the Florida Mayhem, like that defensive look. Yeah, uh, I would say Coliseo is probably out. Not right. And Goose might have to play Doomfist there. Yeah, so it'll be interesting what we see from the Spark coming up next. Hungry Spark. Yeah, there you go. Let's Esperanza. hope they've got it all to show. Esperanza is going to be the next map in this series, looking to. She's the best battlefield to suit their dive-based composition. Florida, I mean, it's anything but subtle. They force a map that favors Ramatra and they come out on top. Will it work for them now that Hangzhou have the cards? Stick around and find out.
moments away we are from heading into map number four in our first game of the mid-season madness and it has already delivered everybody it's a battle of pinks of course mayhem versus the spark here someone hoping to soak up the atmosphere a little bit more in the arena make the most of it here because i no doubt he hopes to try and end the series as soon as possible but it's hungjo's map pick so far these teams have picked maps that are openly hostile to their opponent's style. Oh, and the Spark are fantastic on push. Uh, we, we know that, right? Undefeated 5-0. Oh. Uh, so, tall hill for the Florida Mayhem to climb, especially because they're that good on push, and it's their map choice, right? So they can get a map that they're fantastic on in terms of the dive, and also a game mode that they excel at, trying to send this to a game five. Yeah, this is definitely the best game type. Interestingly enough, though, Hangzhou only played Esperanza once so far. They've actually opted for what well, they've rather, they've ended up on Colosseo four out of five times that they played push so far. Still, like you mentioned, squeaky clean on the map type in general. It's definitely uh, where their best looks are to be found. So keep that in mind. Very, very scary. In, in saying that, obviously, they, uh, the Spark hadn't lost on Oasis coming into the series, and they did get served up an L in that first map, but that's all in the past now. Esperanza, the selection here for the Spark. And we, as we discussed, right, it's definitely a map where you can play Winston. We saw some highlights from Gooseway in the pre-show there, just showing his prowess on this very map. This is how the Spark want to force a map five. I will say the Mayhem, though, have played uh, they have four three two wins, so they played a lot of map fives. Like game five warriors. They are um, some warriors there. In, game in fairness, five. somehow they've booked their own ticket to map five by losing map four, uh, or <laughs> almost and almost throwing map five. So look, I mean, we saw some shaky stuff from the mayhem in a long series against the gladiators recently. So they want to keep their wits about them. Being in an arena full of people, it can drain your energy, right? It's quite an intense yeah. sensation. You're going to have to prevail under these circumstances. Man, when I look at this series, uh, at least as far. The spark in map one was just so flat. I mean, they were like, if, if they end up kind of like faltering in a fifth game, you really got to look back at that map one, the way that went. Because, uh, see, uh, stats would say we would be heading towards a game five. Oh, we got some player camps now for the spark. Everybody's waking up. They're ready. Locked and loaded. And again, I don't know if we see the Doomfist here from Goose. That would be a little bit of fun. Esperanza, uh, it's a two, two win, one loss for the Florida Mayhem. So happy enough to be taken to that map, you'd have to assume. And it will be a dive mirror. Yeah, it's, uh, this time, I mean, this is what we've seen the Spark look the best at in this series, right? Uh, it, you know, Shy on the Sombra has been pretty strong all throughout. Uh, and, and we talked about, uh, it was on uh, Blizzard World, right? Where it was like Merit versus Shy. <laughs> Shy definitely got the best of Merit. Merit slept straight away. Get absolutely wrecked. Someone able to at least respond though. Gets in there, finds Lengsa. Now under a heap of pressure from Lee, but should be able to get back to the rest of his team. So a trade of kills here. Losing a Sombra early though. That's definitely a W in the Monk column there. Nice Sleep Dark connection. Can they actually force through this underpass, right? Four percent, uh, four meters, really. Uh, not really getting anything. Gushway actually gets to the biotic right there, so he has to jump out for a little bit where... <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'd say you have to wake up early in the morning to deal with Monk, but you need to be awake, I think, to take him on there. Dirty stuff. Someone brought down by a pulse bomb here. We're seeing some of these individual mechanics on display now as the spark slowly but surely take the mayhem to task here in the neutral. Yeah, and they should start to actually get that bot underneath the underpass right around towards that first corner. That's, you look at like the tracers, right? Like checkmate, you're looking at, oh, he's like uh, going to go to a pulse bomb. That's because Leaves already killed somebody with a pulse bomb. <laughs> uh, he's going to start working his way up towards another one so fast. Is, I mean, that, it's a DPS duo. When you can get them on these fast dive heroes that they can just kind of get picks individually, they're so difficult to stop. Yeah, I think that's definitely where Hangzhou have the advantage in this kind of matchup. Really scary to try and take that on. Another sleep dart attempt there from up. This time, no connection, but the EMP. I mean, checkmate was grounded. So is able to follow up on it beautifully there. The Hangzhou Spark are far from done on this push. They're getting awful close to that checkpoint. The Mayhem are in tatters. 
So getting this checkpoint would be huge for the Spark because they also have their EMP. It's going to be Gushui getting the benefits of a Nano. It's going to be Chorong ending up using the Rally. They're actually using Rally and Nano stacked on top of each other here. See, Rupa really desperately trying to keep someone in his line of sight. This EMP is going to have to be protected from. Nicely done. Okay, enough healing there and the Primal Rage used by someone to keep him in that fight. This time it's Gushui. Gets fed some pocket sand. We'll be able to jump away. That's wild. They end up using their EMP Nano there, and they end up like losing the fight. Uh, where you know, Florida Mayhem, they end up stacking some of those ultimates on top of each other. Is let's see if the Florida Mayhem can actually get the bot going the other way because the bot's still here, pretty close. Hangzhou didn't lose too many players, right? No. They're able to regroup midway through the fight. The Mayhem also lost a couple on the backside. I like this from Monk. Oh. Uh, have you committed too uh... deeply to this situation, sir? They're gonna get him out. That's that's just ridiculous. Yep, he walks away unscathed. <laughs> Merritt comes off second best yet again. Lee takes him to task, and Florida uh, uh, losing their grip on this game. Yeah, I don't think he was supposed to fall out of the window no, there. No. Uh, but they end up keeping him alive, and that's that first checkpoint over to the Spark. We know the stats on how important it is to get that first checkpoint. And, like, a lot of the game has kind of already progressed, right? I mean, there's we've seen three and a half minutes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've seen like three and a half minutes. You got double support ult here for the Spark. They nice. get rid of Checkmate. I mean, this is yeah. why they're undefeated. Your DPS are getting slapped around in the one-to-one, -one Florida. Chai Lee, absolutely working their magic right now. 84 meters and counting. The Florida Mayhem really just passengers on this crazy train. As what? You have an EMP here and double support ults to just kind of get around this corner. A nice hack there onto someone. Bubble goes down though, so able to break it up. I was going to say, shame if that bubble just went bye-bye from an EMP, <laughs> but Shy's got more patience than I do. Dude, Monk has played really well. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of sleep darts there on the merit. This is going to be a big EMP plus Nano. Rupal Force back here. Gushue playing from inside the bubble lest he is slept. Back to the objective now. Over 100 meters. The spark are working with him. It's still more than half of the round left. Gushway takes it upstairs here. Checkmate recalls right in his purview. Trying to, I mean, trying to keep track of the Winston, but Lee leaves a tracker on someone. Not hard to find a corpse, I guess, especially when it's out in the open. And then Gushway jumps down from the high ground. He actually tries to, like, knock Chorong back into the rest of the spark, but not successful where uh, there. I mean, Chorong tried to make a play to go help RuPaul, but they both fall. See, Hungshu just whipping this game into a churn, right? Even like three, four players, they're staying around, they're continuing to fight. They're really pressuring RuPaul and his healing. Is that resources. a solo EMP on the Gushu? Uh, it might have been, yeah. And uh, the effectiveness, questionable. Lengsa was caught there. I think it was an EMP for okay. Lengsa, and there was a dive from someone. So they are able to find the brig and find some breathing room. But before you know it, the Spark are going to be back and fighting here. That's why Merritt wants to surge ahead. Yeah, Monk might want to keep Big Brother close by. Pause. Uh, this is a very difficult comeback here for the Florida Mayhem. I mean, I mean, they've lost leads like this, but have they made them up? Not sure. Paul's mom gets thrown in there, does not connect with anything in the staircase. This is what's so bad about losing that checkpoint first, because you're running the opposite way, and you can just play from this high ground here. If you're the Spark, it's a fantastic setup. Zero Pulse Bomb kills for checkmate here, Matt. Two for leave, but that's really not what's important. No connections on those. At least the Pulse Pistols are able to go to work for Checkmate, though. Monk is taken down again. He definitely needs to be a focus point here for the Florida Mayhem. Monk is running wild later in these fights if he's allowed to be unchecked. So I think what you're trying to play for here, if you're Florida, is at least get the checkpoint, right? You need to get this checkpoint within the next, like, probably, like, minute, minute and a half. Uh, to give yourself a chance of the bot not kind of going all the way back you know, the, the other direction incredibly fast, back to your side of the map. Uh, and then after that, you got to win probably two fights. So uh, you know, with 350 on the clock, it, it's a large hill to climb because the Spark can just keep doing this, right? With these double flankers, just sending them onto the bot, sending them onto the bot. You're going to have to probably you know, win another two fights before even you get the checkpoint. Maybe he's going to get away with that. That's crazy. <laughs> Shy brings someone down, though not allowed to escape is the Winston. Someone with four deaths here, leading his team in that metric. Goose Ray only one death. But they've also been kind of like rolling the entire time, yeah. right? Uh, there's been no, no defense here from the Florida Mayhem. Not able to stop the bleeding whatsoever. Look at this here, like we're just swinging from vine to vine as the Hangzhou Spark, right? Keeping the fight going, leaving them in this kind of churn. It's a kill, but 30 seconds later, another one. You constantly have a player advantage. You are incrementally taking the map back here and you're staggering your opponent. 
Uh, but this game mode kind of works in the favor of the Spark in terms of how they love to play. This team wants to take fights. They want to fight. They don't want to play a little bit of a slower, more methodical game uh, that's kind of based around ability uses. Right now. They want to get in there and they want to brawl it up. They want to take these fights fast. So uh, 18 final blows to 10 here for Hung Show. 53 eliminations to 26. They are piling the heck in on these fights. Everybody's getting a piece of the action here. Shy is 14 eliminations. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> You're not coming back from that one, buddy. But like you mentioned, they'll they'll take a fight, you know, four on five, three on five. Yep. They'll just they'll just keep it going. They back up though, they have this whole choke on lock, this whole bridge area here. I mean they can just have Gushui sit on the high ground, you farm up another EMP, you have that close spawn. And you see Florida, well, they don't want to walk into it now. There, They're trying to force this fight. There here. is no incentive for Hangzhou to push. No. There is none. They have a huge lead. They don't want to push into uh, unfavorable territory. Hold this powerful position, this high ground setup, and just keep the mayhem on their side of the map. Look at this. Look, look. Chai's not pushing that far forward. He's playing the objective as Sombra right now. Yeah, and, and uh, no, see, sometimes like on Coliseo, right, where teams don't want to push into certain positions, right? Being able to hold that high ground there, they don't want to push into Hangzhou in that position, but you're down by so much, you can't just let you the no clock choice. go away. <laughs> yeah. But the fact that, like, uh, Chai can just hold M1 on the bot midway through that fight. He's not flanking, no. he's not initiating, he doesn't have to do any of that. Just, like, frontlining on Sombra. Now he's getting nano. That's very based and normal. Okay. Florida Mayhem here, absolutely getting clowned on, ladies and gentlemen. There's no uh, other way to put it. It's a pulse for checkmate, but my goodness, it's egg on the face of Florida Mayhem as Hung Show send them <laughs> packing on Esperanza. What a way to force a map five. What a statement here in map four. Yeah, Lee, Lee's pulse bombs have the, uh, it's like the, the magnetism of the new Cassidy grenade, it feels like at times, where it feels like he's always able to connect with them. Where Florida Mayhem, where do we think we go here for game five because obviously they had that map selection uh we already saw oasis probably has to be lijang tower i think oh. you can get like a good control center matchup or do you uh, play like a nepal i mean I, I suppose village i could be good for you i'm interested to see how like their their rush comp interacts yeah. here with this. <laughs> oh uh, the, the one i mean I, I would be scared of like ilios right uh, I, I, I don't know if you'd go there if you're the no, Florida Mayhem. I don't think so. Uh, I, I think you gotta look at probably like Lijang Tower, Nepal. You're rolling the dice either way. What about like, I was even gonna say like Antarctic Peninsula? Like that's a possibility? Like, uh, you know, m maybe we see that Sub level probably is a tough one to play against a very good dive comp, uh, to be honest <sighs> with you. True. Yeah. It's a, it's a tricky situation for the Florida <laughs> Mayhem to be in. These teams are polar opposites. Very interesting matchup. Oh, okay, yeah. Antarctica Peninsula gets locked in for map number five here. I think for like Icebreaker, it makes perfect sense, right? You can definitely, yeah. and, and Labs, I know you can get a lot of value out of the Rush Cop. It's gonna be a dice roll either way for the Florida Mayhem. They're gonna to hope to get stages that suit their style of play because they are not even close on the dive comp. Oh. Not even in the same bracket, ladies and gentlemen. So stick around, because speaking of brackets, one of these two is heading to the lower one after this next map.
mm. just watching the Pro-Am already like that as a team that they know their strength mm. and if they can lean on to that, there is a lot of great things in the very near future <laughs> for this team. Coming into the season, everyone was like, hey, are they going to be as good as the top teams? But they are proving themselves to be at that level. Uh, I think it's been a really good oh. day for the back line. Oh, oh that's my huge. goodness, oh. strike down the tube. <laughs> Someone gives them nowhere to go. I know they're in a pretty fast fight. Yeah, Matrix, oh. that's scary, but Merritt is unperturbed. He's able to take Kipster down through it. Merritt comes alive and is able to find the power play. That's stunning. Cardi will not be moved. Caught on the card here. It's a double pulse in the back, and both supports fall to checkmate. He'll make it three for the fight. Nika felt the whole team yeah. was so invested in this. They care so much. Yeah. I mean, that is the type of intensity that could take you a long way in a tournament format. I think for Florida, they could be a scary team to go up against. What a way to find a winner in this series. Our first of our mid-season madness, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Hangzhou Spark, the Florida Mayhem are taking it all the way to map five. It's going to be Antarctic Peninsula when did, to the When does this whole dynasty play? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> nobody tell him. Oh, okay. Nobody, nobody tell him. Uh, th this series has been uh, a team selecting a map that they can play their preferred style on, and that team dominating, and the other team doing the opposite the next round. Uh, It'll be very interesting how this last map goes. Uh, if I'm the Spark, do you even consider matching like the Ramatra base stuff? Like, just go out, just go out, just play just go out swinging, go out swinging, just play in the, the, just play the Winston you, base stuff. You can do that on Antarctic Peninsula, I think. Uh, I think Icebreaker is a really weird map to try and make that star work because your dive routes are really weak. This is what I wanted it's to talk about. a lot of pink highlighted on one side. I mean, it's just not even close. Um, <laughs> we don't expect Sombras also to come out with like, you know, huge final blow totals, but dude. like, come on, dude. But <laughs> come on, man. One dead, 23 final blows. Like, uh, I mean, that is, I mean, well, okay, so this is Esperanza, right? So you, it, it wasn't you'd... much better on Blizzard World, mate. But now? Huh? Nope. I told you, Shy was 5 and 0, Merit was 0 and 5 at one point, and it didn't get much better. Uber stats there. Yeah, that's right. I could have just made that up, really. You're going to have to take my word for it. This has been the most uh, clear cut advantage for the Hangzhou Spark in this entire series. Which is crazy, because Merit's fantastic on Sombra, like typically. Yes. Like like, like a very strong Sombra. He also player, so. he, he leads the league in like a lot of heroes. I mean, he, he leads the league in like final blows per 10 on Hanzo, for example. Uh, so like, Merit, look, an incredible player. In this matchup, he he looks like a clown. He look like in like he, he's being Jeez. made to look like a clown in this matchup. Yeah. In the Sombra head to head, it's been rough. I yeah. mean, it has been rough. But we've seen fantastic things when he's playing like the Reaper, right? Yep. He's looked really strong when they're playing the Reaper. Uh, and then checkmate on that May. I think that's really like like when you look at this series, when they haven't played the Sombra and just kind of got like Reaper May with the Ramatra and they go up against the Spark, that's when they start to dominate. Well, here's the problem for me. This isn't this isn't like a constant issue for Merit. Right? Merit leads the league in final blows per 10 on Sombra. The, yeah. whole, the whole league. Right. So, right. very, very adept Sombra player. It's just today, and the comparison makes him look bad, I think, because Shy has been excellent. It also It's also because the Spark are finding much more success in comps where Sombra needs to be run, whereas Merit has his best moments, I think, playing Reaper in this matchup. So, yeah. there's a lot of things that skew. The, and we literally took the statistics from a map in which the Florida Mayhem are getting blown out. But I will say, in maps that Hangzhou win, the Sombra gap is immense. Yeah, I mean, uh, can they do it just on one control map here towards the end? Map number one, the control, was not really that close. Uh, it, it, we, we saw the Spark come out, try and play that Ramatra head to head. It did not look great. Uh, we kind of thought they would end up winning the maps that they could end up playing some of those dive compositions, uh, and they have. They, they've done so. So it uh, looks like we got a little bit of a pause uh, before we jump right into this next game. But uh, if you're the Spark, I think... So I, I get why you want Shy on the Sombra when you're playing, like, Ramatra comps and whatnot, because he's so good at the Sombra, but it just has not worked. You need a little bit more, especially when you're trying to play, like, 
like May Sombra. Like you just don't have enough like upfront damage. You need to have like a Reaper, even just like Sombra Reaper. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, you don't yeah, need just like the Reaper. May necessarily, right? Yeah. But she seems like she, and there are some maps I think on Antarctic Peninsula where even in a rush comp, you may just not want to have the May, but we see it on sub level quite a lot, even though there aren't all, uh, that many chokes, especially on that main yeah. point that you can sort of work. It, it, this is an issue for Hangzhou. This, this is the kind of map where they might just, uh, uh, they either have to win a rush mirror round, or they need to play a dive comp on a on a map that doesn't really favor. I'm right? checking out all these crowd shots, trying to trying to see like all the art we got going on here. I mean, it is uh, it is looking fun down. The, you know, I, I, we, we gotta call up Sean Miller. We gotta get on the plane tomorrow. I mean, yeah, like first match starts at like 10 a.m. down there, so everyone. We can be there by Saturday. Yeah, we yeah, by Saturday. We'll be there Saturday. Make it happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, look, I look. I mean, when was the last time we had a, a sort of global Overwatch tournament in in Seoul, Korea? It's been a long time, a long time coming yeah. for a lot of these sort of really ardent fans of the league and many players who they maybe go you know, come up watching in sort of Korean contenders now in right. the West. So yeah. having them on that time zone and for many of these players, a chance to return to their home country and show what they can do in front of their home crowd here. Yes, they might bear the namesake Florida, but of course many of these players call South Korea home still. And a win on home turf would be huge here. Technically, <laughs> if you want to put it that way, for the Florida Mayhem. The Spark, of course, look to put those dreams to bed here. It's going to be the Icebreaker to start us off. Yeah, it's uh, this is maybe one you can get away with the Winston, right? Kind of play around that central pillar. Maybe you kind of like dive in over the top. We'll I see. think it's the worst <laughs> map to play dive on. I mean, look, I I'm trying to... I'm trying to will this into yeah. existence for the spark, uh, right? Look, th and this uh, is really just a, a feeling because we don't see teams play dive on this map in, yeah. in the West. So I don't have empirical data to back Look, this up. I am fine with the spark losing in this fashion. If 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 they can't make this work, and like obviously you know they go out playing the dive. I mean, there's a great collapse on a RuPaul. And it didn't even take a big commitment there from Shy, right? It's just a hack on RuPaul, so no fade available. They follow up, and look at this. They're not overextending. So see, they're not overextending into this rush comp so, at all. So here's my argument of why I think this could be pretty decent in terms of, like, Winston-based comps. Uh, you have an easy path for biotic grenades, because there's really only two jokes you kind of come through. You play around those pillars, you get some of these big biotic grenades into some of those players, and maybe you can take them out. Okay, so here's the fight. The main oh, right again, pulling their way uh, out of the point. Chorong under pressure, uh, but traded. Th that is a two-player biotic grenade on a checkmate and Chorong there from Monk. Still though, you've lost your backline, right? So you don't have the Lucio. You're up against the rush comp. Your backline is always going to be involved yeah. in the fight. You actually can't keep them separate and give them good sight lines. The only way to do that is force them into a choke. It's very awkward. So that's the risk for the spark. They need to like find a pick and then back off. You can't overcommit into this rush. Yeah, they, 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 once the Romatra gets on the point, they don't want to like just stand there face to face. I mean, he just right? runs him over. You, yeah. you literally cannot run away from the Romatra when he has a speed boost there. Plus, the, the, the speed boost from Nemesis makes sure we can get in touch with that backline. Can you come back though and take this straight away? Uh, you do have an EMP. Oh, the fade timing for Rupal. He got the Coalescence, but they still lost Choro. Can they do it with four? It's possible. Shai's not able to get away here. And who's going to kill someone? Nah. Uh, all right, so EMP down the Gurgle map. Forget about it. Let's wait for the next one. Mm, not great. So primal. is going to go Primal here. And you're going to use your Rally. Okay, I don't hate this. Uh, especially if you can... Yeah, there's no, no fate there for Rupal. Kushwe. <laughs> the Primal Blade, man, strikes again. And we see, like, an engagement on, on the other side of the fight, right? You mentioned the Rally comes out from Lengsa. Hangzhou just pushed themselves in. They, they played like a rush comp themselves with the Rally. Yeah, it really... Really bizarre. I think they actually caught Florida Mayhem off guard so bad there that they didn't think that they were actually going to go in and try and fight that. And now it uh, looks like a little bit of a battle. The Sombra's here, just going to engage in information, see where everybody's at. Call. Like, oh, you're playing a dive comp, but who makes the call to just run in there? And what is it that you see that sort of precipitates it? That's very interesting. It works beautifully as well. Take nothing away from the spark. It wasn't luck. Great timing from them, but a the sound barrier is going to be pretty hard to deal with. Luck forced away. Here's the Death Blossom for Merit. He gets Gooseway for his troubles, but it's going to be a trade, and it's no backline for the Florida Mayhem here. No healing whatsoever on the map right now. Florida ideally want to transition to the point if they can, and Checkmate doubles down. Mayhem will be back in residence here, but it's far from a clean-cut fight. Yeah, so no support ults for Florida, right, coming up, but they're going to have this EMP that Hangzhou's going to walk into. And then I guess what, Hangzhou's next best opportunity will be when Shy has that EMP. Maybe this fight, maybe the fight after. 
Oh, he gets caught. Oh. The translocator is slapped. Oh, he gets oh. out. Checkmate. Finds his translocate out. That one could have been scary, though. Shy gets enough time to build his EMP, yes. though, with all that kerfuffle that happens. So we have dueling EMPs in this next fight. Checkmate spotted for a time. Gonna go for the EMP now. Lex is able to get away. Knocked back by something or other. Maybe shield bashing back towards the rest of his team. Here's the dive. It's a late EMP from Shy, but you better believe it's a good one. Merritt has to try and get away here, but he's stuck on the point. The Mayhem buy enough time to get in the lead on percentage, but Hangzhou went out the fight with the second EMP. Yeah, if Florida is not able to get like Gushue out of in the supports out of the fight fast, and, and you know you have an EMP there that comes in late, I mean the Spark are able to win these fights. Uh, now you have Primal here available and Rally for the Spark. So let's see, maybe Monk can land like a big bio grenade on the way in. Okay, there's the hack. Dive oh, to follow it up. So Toro good. absolutely ruined again. Shy is at the perfect moment, the perfect place. And now someone's going to get forced away from his team. There's no chance for Florida to touch here with numbers. This is scary. The Hunter Spark hit the dive on Icebreaker and they prevail. The mayhem had been quaking in their boots uh, here. And we have seen this a little bit in the West where, you know, we'll, we'll have a, uh, you know, let's use like an Atlanta Rain or a Houston Outlaws, right? Yeah. Who is fantastic at the dive and they'll play it into teams that are playing the rush. And because they're that good at the comp, they're able to win out pretty consistently. I mean, the Atlanta Rain too, right? You see like Hawk sometimes, whether, you know, it's on a, you know, D.Va kind of play that with the, the Tracer Sombra for them at times. And they're able to win against these dive they comps the, where- They have the dong hack dive as yeah, well. Yeah, and the dong hack dive. Where if you're the spark and you're this good at this comp, uh, you have to feel like your best, like the very peak of the Spark playing dive, is going to beat the Florida Mayhem playing Rush. Like, you have to believe that if you're the Spark. So, uh, well, th this actually may be even a better point for them. There's evidence now to suggest that the Spark can get away with playing dive here. What, what do you think about them matching the Tracer Sombra? I actually think it's probably better for the Spark. Hard to catch them with a May. Uh, yeah. And also a reaper. They don't have to push into you with the, the multiple levels here. You, you can't get a pitched battle in like a straight rush down. So uh, I, I understand it. Shy gets caught out. Oh, a bit of a blooper there. In the grand scheme of things, probably doesn't affect things that much. Might just be Hung Shou allowing Florida to cap the point first, but that should be all. Uh, yeah, it looks like maybe Shy's translocator got destroyed when he was like battling checkmate yeah. and then just kind of like threw it. And he got stuck. It's look, Shy will probably still have a first EMP. I'm just gonna put it out there. So it may not materially harm the spark. I like the hack there on the, yeah. Just Straight away, legs are turning yeah. around. Checkmate those found leave! Oh, what a win there! Toron getting involved in that fight too. Still the mayhem control the point here, so this is good for them to transition a mistake from Shy into a clean pick on leave. They're pushing the right buttons, Matt. Yes, the uh, Spark have looked so disjointed. I, I feel like they just need to like fall back and completely reset. I feel like they're just kind of like, you know, we talked about how great it was on Esperanza, you know, fighting 4v5 and whatnot. Uh, now they're doing it like, and they're they're losing them, which makes it look way worse. Where, okay, get everybody grouped together. Now try and formulate a plan. Merritt hoping to have his normal level of Sombra performance we've seen in the West here. Has catapulted him to the top of the standings in many performance metrics. Checkmate on point, Lee. Throwing the gauntlet here. But Lex has found someone elsewhere. So the Ramatra is down. The core of this mayhem composition has been dealt with. Now you should be able to move on to the point. They're trying to get like a hack on it. Checkmate, they're able to finish him off at range anyway. It's actually probably pretty good for the Spark because not only, I mean, you're going to flip this before they you get- You get this for free, man. Uh, they don't have to use anything, right? They, they get it for absolutely nothing. Uh, this next fight may as well decide how this point goes, right? You're gonna have both teams come into this. Everybody's going to have ultimates. Depending on like, like if the Hangzhou Spark are able to come out of the other side of this fight, you know, with even some extra ultimates, right? You're gonna be probably, you know, 40, 50, right? You're in a spot where you can take the lead in the fight after. How do you get away from Annihilation if you're EMP? Oh, Merritt's gonna have a later EMP. He actually gets spotted even, it doesn't matter. They run Shy over. That EMP on someone doesn't seem to bother the Mayhem at all. They have a rally and that's all they've had to spend so far. Gooseway forced away. The Florida Mayhem just cap the point and move on with their lives. Yes, uh, that is unbelievable. That is unfortunate there from the Spark as they try and get aggressive with that EMP early on. But it's a really nice you know, rally from Chorong with the stun on the bash and able to just take him out. Ah, oh, man, that is 
crazy. The mayhem here, stick for checkmate. This time he's found one. It's links are out of the picture already. 92% and counting now for Florida. They want to take this one all the way. It's a missed pulse bomb from Lee. The EMP comes in for Merritt and X marks the spot. The main are going to drop their business right now and take us to a third round. <laughs> Game five. Third round to kick off mid-season match. Chorong just wants someone to stare at on the other side of the stage, bro. He's like, bro, bring him out. Oh, maybe he's looking at RuPaul. Like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> I have whiplash from this entire series. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and this is our first series of the day. Like, we got a pretty long day oh, yeah. today, right? Absolutely. What a way to whet the appetite for incredible Overwatch gameplay. Interesting. At times, there's only been one of these teams providing it. So far, though, in this map, it's been both of them. Five. Round three, three. laps. It's the last location we have left to travel to. One of these teams will be advancing in the upper bracket into the upper semis. All right, so Ramatra composition here for the Florida Mayhem. Spark come out on that dive where, uh, you know, we've obviously seen in the West tons of Ramatra played here. Even Reinhardt on this point, specifically, right? Uh, See how the Spark go about attacking this as Shy has kind of made it into the back line trying to set up a nice dive of Gujway and leave. Okay, hacks from both Sombras here. Pressure on Monk, but Rupal really gets the stiff end of the deal there, dealing with uh, leave. That's yeah, two kills I, for the I Tracer. Tell you what, Monk and Lengta in the in the maps that they've won have looked really strong. Uh, right there, Hung Jung goes really aggressive. The Florida Mayhem speed boosts like right towards that back line of the Spark and like Monk Biotic grenades, him and Link's and they're able to stay alive long enough to, to allow the rest of the players on the Spark to pick up some kills. I mean, they've had a fantastic series uh, overall. Monk, man. Uh, okay. <laughs> the, the narrative of the Spark bat line being the weak point. I mean, I guess by contrast, I, I suppose, but man, they've really been putting in some heavy lifting today. Checkmate! It's a warm reception from Shire, but he's actually forced to pull the plug there. Sparker at 27% now, the Mayhem grouping up, but Lee could be a problem. Spanner in the works, maybe a thorn in the side, a pulse bomb on the rear end. Good damage dealt there, and someone is eventually brought to his knees. Lee finishes the job with the heavy pulse pistols, but Rupal trades it out. Is this enough for the Mayhem to go forward with? No Ramatra, they'll stick to the high ground, and how does Merritt get involved? Yeah, I, I don't know if they can, you know, because you want Merritt to get in there and make a play, but at that point, Gushway would just jump on right on top of the supports. Close to primal range is Gushway. Scary prospect, that is. Chaya looking for Chorong in the two mult. He's found him. Merritt on the outside looking in for much of this round. If someone can't get the team into the fight, he can't put those shotguns to work. This EMP has to be so good from Checkmate, or else they are in dire straits. I mean, and what do you do? Like, he hasn't been able to really kind of get close to supports, and they haven't been able to really put that pressure on the supports that necessary at the moment. Oh, Gushway can't join his team. EMP'd as well. No escape for Gushway. And he's not in line to say to get a nano. I mean, look at where Monk is playing from. Yeah, but now how do you transition into a fight win here? Are they going to a nano Lengsa here with the rally to try and win this? Stall for a time. Thinking about it, rally employed. They're gonna Nano. go for it here. Leave gets a Nano instead, but it's gonna be the Cold Essence now making it very hard for Leave to find his target. Sound Barrier coming out from Chorong. The Mayhem spending everything they've got to win this fight. All this just to mimic a fraction of the Sparks' power on this map. They spend big, but they get what they came for. All right, so the, the EMP was quite good, right? Because you did have Gushway kind of like hiding out. Maybe they were gonna like have him come from behind with follow up a big biotic grenade, and they actually caught him out. Finish him off rather quickly. And, but now it's, ha you know, Shine, they're probably just going to let him farm EMP, right? I mean, he'll have it well, in a couple of seconds here. And uh, yeah, he's looking for Chorong, I think. Th there's no there's no big support ult, right? So just farm this EMP here if you're Shy. Connect with a support or two and you feel like you can put he's it away. It. Shy hung around for long enough. He has an EMP available. The Spark have all the tools to put the mayhem to bed here. They got the lullaby, they got the mobile, they got the EMP, it catches more, and there goes the backline of the mayhem! No healing for you! Death blossom for Merritt, but Gushway definitely avoids it. Now back into the fray. That's two with the primal rage, and Merritt who will fare no better. Forced to Wraith walk away from the point, and he'll be caught eventually, and all the mayhem do. Hangzhou Spark cap the point. Overtime won't last long here. Maybe a touch for checkmate, but he'll barely get there. Rupal trying to fade over towards the point now. He'll be shepherded off it as well. The Hangzhou Spark 
beat the allegations of being one-dimensional here. And they're going to take away the first match of your mid-season madness. There's nothing wrong with being one-dimensional when you're just fantastic at that one dimension, right? As they come through at the very end, I mean, that is a just a slugfest. Uh, it, look, if Hangzhou can perform at that level on the dive, they are a threat to just about everybody because there's a lot of teams in this tournament who would love to play dive. They don't want to play rush all of the time, right? There's a lot of maps you can play the dive on, tons of versatility. Uh, it, it's just no rush. When you need to play it at certain times, uh, I, I think they need to go back and look at some of those comps, right? I think like the, the Sombra Tracer with the Ramatra didn't look great. I uh, you know having maybe like a Reaper look in the mix, uh, but uh, look, plenty I mean, of teams in the West don't yeah, go for that comp either, that's right? That's true. I mean, but man, Spark put down a Florida AM team that is very strong. Florida had a very uh, clear-cut idea of how they intended to win the series, but when you get to these control maps, sometimes you can't just pick a map that suits your comp. And frankly, we saw Florida have a real good chance to take Icebreaker away, right? That was kind of it. You find success there, and this series looks very different. It's a different shade of pink thrown up there on the Jumbotron. It also makes me think of what the rest of the series would have looked like if the Spark would have just committed to play Dot, right? Like, instead of trying to, like, match them at certain times here or there, right? Like, right, so your, your argument is, regardless of map, right, just try and play that comp, try and make it work. I mean, look, Shy and Lee were that good on Sombra Tracer, and then Gushui is fantastic on the Winston, and it's not like... The Rush is such a dominant comp, right? Like, we've seen Rush in the past where it's like, you can't even think about playing dive comps, right? Where we see teams do play dive, even against, like, Rush-style comps. And and I think, like, there's still even, like, a little bit of a debate of, like, what is, like, the optimal comp at most times. And it, if you're that good on it for the Spark, like, just commit. Hangzhou carry the torch for Chinese Overwatch after so many of these years with such a distinctive style. They never let you breathe. Esperanza yeah. was a map where they kept fights going for sometimes a minute or more, constantly staggering, constantly pushing ahead, constantly forcing you to fight in an undermanned situation, right? Like a, always a player disadvantage here. And then, you know, we, we get over to, to Antarctic Peninsula. That last round, they play so well around the wind conditions of the Florida Mayhem, right? When there's Annihilation or Death Blossom, they're really definitely able to avoid that. Shy is just... Shy and Monk, for me, are huge standouts in this match. Dude, uh, yeah. just, uh, they have an outsized impact on the game relative uh, to the rest of their class. Uh, I thought Monk played really well today. Uh, you know, time and time again, we were talking about like merit stats, then you're looking at the game. Like Monk is consistently hitting these sleep darts you know, against him. Uh, oh, I don't know about uh, that one, but Chorong. Okay. A player of the match. You know, the last time we gave player of the match to the losing team was Gia. No. It was Dia no. from the Shanghai uh, Dragons. Actually. I thought it was like Jake retirement game. We gave yeah. him player of the match. No. So something tells me that's probably not what we're going for here. Although Chorong had a pretty darn solid series. We've only ever done it once before. That was a very, yeah. very special occasion. Uh, Ch 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 Chorong was all right. I think Shy is an argument. Uh, you know, if I was, if it was, uh, you know, if I was, uh, no, if I'm Shy. All right, all right, here we go. It's your boy. Here we go. It's your boy. Uh, Chorong, he was good. You know. If, if we were looking at a player from Florida that was good, Shurong was pretty good, but Shai, probably a little bit better today. Probably one of the first times I've like openly disagreed with the player of the match decision on broadcast, but obviously, yeah, it was uh, Shai. Listen, I mean, you, you put it, it wasn't always fair, the comparisons Look. we made, I think in the head-to-head -head with Merit. It was always on maps where like, Hangzhou just really dominate. There are some situations where maybe like Shai can't get into the fights. I think Shambali Monastery is a good example of him getting caught yeah. outside of the play a lot of the time. That has a lot to do with the fact that they're going up against a rush comp, but if it's late to the fight, it's hard to keep up with the team that's running Lucio. Uh, that being said, man, this guy is just all over it. Yeah, he's Fire filthy. Final Blows Patel and Sombra, which is really excellent. So many Sombras just get away with just going for utility, just going, you know, yeah. just a hack, just trying to lock people out. Two deaths per tick. Man, come on. That is just... <laughs> Oh, man. I'm sure Chorong's stats are good, but probably not this. Probably I not mean, this. Pro probably yeah. not this. I mean, the, the EMPs were on point. The, the the ability for the EMP to come through and then leave and Gushui to be right there a split second later, always able to follow up on that. I mean, just an insane performance from Shai so, today. put in perspective for you, the I think the top Sombra in the league is, it, it was actually Merit leading into this with like more than six final blows per 10, about 6.1-ish. So this is how close Shai is yeah. to that sort of top, top, top stat over a large number of games. So. 
very, very strong performance from him. He is involved in these fights, and you notice he sticks around just a little longer than other Sombras. That EMP is getting developed just a, quite a lot faster in many cases than his opposite number. And, and just really good kill participation, right? A lot of times it's like Sombra is the EMP farming that up and then just kind of like getting out of dodge and letting like a Tracer, Reaper, or like the Winston follow it up. But I mean, he's really good kill participation. I mean, time and time again on Esperanza, right? You even saw him not even in stealth, just like frontline, just putting down damage. Like getting nano, standing yeah, or on getting, the box. Or getting nano. Yeah, maybe there's some extenuating circumstances there, but uh, all in all, it's the DPS in this team that are frightening, but also players like Monk really excited yeah. as this series. Hangzhou are looking like the complete package in the dive comp. Curious to see how they match up against the West, the rest of the West teams in this yeah. tournament. We're going to find that out one way or another. But for now, let's head to a break. Let's head to the desk. Let's talk about the match that was. Well, welcome back everyone to Watchpoint. It looks like the Spark edged it out in a close series. What do you mean? You, you did pick, not you predict pick, that. You no, pick, you yeah. can't have both, Johnny. It's I can. I, I can. It's like, I won. Look at I that, won. three won. I can. No, no. They're both- Hangul Spark. He got him confused. <laughs> Hangul Spark. The pick was an error. Uh, you were in the back with so much cope. 
the entire series. All right, all right. I think I think Florida threw it away. I, I know, to be fair, to be fair, I think Spark played a great series. I think they, they were so dominant, even more than I thought. Right? That, I thought was, the that dive, was a masterclass in dive. Yeah, yeah I thought that the dive could have been close. Like I knew, okay, Florida's gonna be favored in Rush. I thought dive could have been close. Maybe Florida could sneak out a map. Maybe they could have won Blizzard World, but. They didn't, and and once we got to Ezra, the backline deserves your apology. Jake. Yeah, agree, agree. I think Monk and Langsop played an incredible series. Monk in particular, so many sleeps, so many insane nades. I think RuPaul was going blow for blow on that Ana category, but the overall team coordination in the dive was just on another level from the Spark. They were so good at punishing these rushes on that final Koth map. I mean, I still think this is an incredibly close series. I think it absolutely could have gone either way. It just came down to a couple crucial moments, but. Agree, Spark, when they came on in the dive, looks terrible. How do you guys feel about the map picks and the decision-making from the teams? I think, honestly, it was it was pretty stock standard. Yeah, I think I'd say so. Of, yeah. I think, honestly, Oasis was the weirdest pick of the series for me, that Spark plays um, Rush in they, the first map. I mean, they got destroyed. But, like, I don't know, they had like a weird... It feels like, why, didn't, why not pick an Ilios and just play Dive Mirror? You know, I feel maybe they could have won the series more easily, honestly, with a map that they don't... I mean, they played Rush two out of three maps, or like some weird... Ramatra on a break, it was, it was pretty terrible when they brought Yeah, that. I, OSIS has a bit of a really strong map for Hangzhou Spark uh, throughout this year. They're, they were undefeated on Oasis going into this series, so I get where they're coming from. Compositionally, it doesn't make sense, because yes, you're playing into the Florida Mayhem brawl like that. Uh, and for Oasis has also been Florida Mayhem's uh, map of choice. The, every time in the loser's bracket, you know, they have picked Oasis several times, because it is a go-to map for them. So, yes, I think you can question Oasis, but Hangzhou Spark, they felt comfortable on that map. Other than that, Maps were pretty much in order. Hangzhou Spark, they're undefeated on push maps this year. So that's a nice little trigger for you. Say, say what you want, you know, about, oh, low sample size, oh, playing other teams that are not, you know, Houston and Atlanta, what, what have you. If you're undefeated on push through like five, six maps, that speaks to like really good consistency. So Hangzhou Spark, um, it, what an amazing win from them. Like now, this is this is a tournament. <laughs> the tournament is live. This is what we're talking about. What's wrong about you? This is what we're talking about. Who impressed you? Who impressed you? I mean, Hong Spark. I mean, I think the team in general was very impressive. I think I we gotta give props to the whole team. Like we were talking about, oh, they're a dive one trick team, and you know, I think they're they still kind of are. They kind of they still are, but <laughs> so good that it doesn't really matter. Like yeah, yeah, the three month is, tracer is just <laughs> impeccable. And I think I honestly, for me, I think Florida. I think they were. Nerve. It seemed like they were a little bit. Nervous, Are we actually running with the the, the land shader narrative? Here? I, I, I feel like I feel going? like I feel like we're that's where like a lot of the mistakes from Florida came. I from. back like, you, Danny. It's no, not just, based in fact. We're just speculating, but I love running with the narrative. I, I'll, I'll, I'll sure. back you on there, this there one. Were a couple so I think there were, I think on that last yeah. map, it felt Florida was very one-dimensional. Like we're just gonna send it over and over again with our Lucio and Moira. And I mean, the one map they won on that last control was when they're playing on a brig and slowing it down and playing a more tactical style. But whenever they, I think it was part of their game plan, honestly, to play Lucio Mora and just like run it down on the on a brig and put a skill test to them. But unfortunately for Florida, Spark just passed the test. You know, I think they reacted really well. Langsun Monk had great kiting moments so many times in this series, staying alive, looking like some of the better support duo that we've, we've seen in, in the league, right? Look at teams like Atlanta Reign, where their supports are just so hard to catch and kill. It makes a huge difference uh, trying to kill these teams, right? Like you, you have to, you, you know, you can't mark the Tracer Sombra because they're so elusive. And if the Ana Brig can, can read your aggression and, and back out at the right moment, it just feels really bad trying to run after them on Reaper. Yeah, and I'm very interested to see what color the Mayhem is going to rebrand <laughs> to after this uh, match against the Spark. Uh, let us know on Twitter. They lost their pink slip. Play into pink. Oh, he did. Oh, we've got Johnny. 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 <laughs> Johnny. Pink slip is something you own a car with in America. Johnny. It's only been one match. <laughs> and we has. already have to have the talk. We do. Yep. Unforced errors. It's happening? Yeah. We're we going to have to talk. We had a time in, our, in, a, in a young person's life. This is where we have to have <laughs> to talk. talk. Yeah. Stay on the payload. <laughs> there it is. We're done. No, no, I'm kidding. We actually have something to show here. Uh, we got to talk about this massive C9 when Florida Mayhem stepped off the cart in map two here. I mean, it was pretty questionable. As you can see, time is running out. 10 seconds left. Florida Mayhem last push here, and they want this cart to go all the way over here. Now, the problem is the Hunter Spark are actually taking a pretty contested fight early. So you can see, like, 
They're already taking it early. Merit is under pressure here from uh, Shy and Leave. So they already have that going against them. And as we start playing this out, we're going to see that Florida Mayhem, they actually have a pretty good chance of winning this fight. Someone is going to activate his Primal Rage here in the back line. Monk is a nice sleep, but he's woken up someone going to activate the Primal Rage. Um, you actually get a pick here onto Gushu as well, who's going to overextend. So this fight is just a brawl in the corridors. There's just player icons everywhere. Goats meta memories right here. But they step off the card. They find a pick, but they step off the card. Now, if we start slowing things down here, I want to give some credit to Hangzhou Spark here. Because as you can see, the Nono comes out onto Lengsa. And this is a Nono Brig in a very small corridor, and he is having the time of his life, just brawling, flailing this maze, and actually pushes the Florida Mayhem back here. Nice stun right here, and then going to rotate around, and as well, deny them one more time here on the outskirts as well. So, as much as you can hate on the Florida Mayhem, checkmate should have touched, someone should have touched. Lengsa did a really good job there for Nitro Spark. So, is this a C9? I'm afraid it's a C9. Thank you, Necra, for your confirmation right there. There you go. Credit to the actual Spark, though, and Langsa for doing a good job protecting the card. It was a land jitters. That, yeah, that's oh. it. <laughs> I mean, I mean that, is, that is a pretty huge error, right? Like, I think someone's doing the right thing there. He, he's got the chance to juggle Ana into the corner. She got no CDs left. You can get that kill. And honestly, overtime spawns, maybe just win Blizzard World right there. To be they fair, care. that would have given Spark the chance to, to have map pick on Esquire.